whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. When I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do, though. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first party out. I really love about being here. Whatever your name is, get ready for the big surprise. I really love about being here. I'm trying to use the phone! Parents with the fam. It's a rectangle. What? It's a PC! Wait. Xbox Series X. Right? That's not a name. Eh. Never underestimate the power of the Schwartz. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. Yes? I'm trying to find a German man doll. Me too, me too. Do you have any more in the back? <laughs> What? You see that? <laughs> what did I say? They, they, these guys are looking for a turbo man? A gentleman <laughs> dog, yes. <laughs> They're looking for turbo man. <laughs> hey, everybody, these two are looking for a turbo man. What's up, man? Now, what's so funny? Well, where have we you got guys plenty been? of turbo man's faithful saber tooth tiger booster. <laughs> One of the things I really, I really love about being here is the families that are here. And we see parents with the fam. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Jez7780 here. What grinds my gears with the gaming grindhouse episode nine. Shout out to the grinders in here: Gadget Guy, Eshen, Luca, The Coup, 1985, Immortal Black, Garuda Legends, Yo Garuda, Mog, Shadow the Ghost, Buck Roger, Sam, Jamal. We're ready, Captain Crunch, and we got our special guest here, Chris Righteous. Coming to us from the Saltiest Podcast and Planet Xbox. And I already got a dislike. God damn. What the hell did I say? Did nobody like my clips in the beginning? Damn. Yeah, shout out to all the new subscribers and the grinders coming out. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a good show tonight. Looking for the frogs. Frogs is coming on a little bit later. Uh, maybe we'll have a surprise guest. Uh, the grinds door is open. Link might be jumping on after he finishes work. And then the J-dubs might be jumping on in. I don't know. I leave the grinds door ajar a little bit to the grindhouse. Maybe joins in. But anyway, let's get it. It is going to be juicy. Real juicy. This sign, the, the, the grinds board is going to be hot. We got the executives on notice right here. Arnold's ready. I got Jim Gordon Ramsay here. Tony Soprano. We got the Sirens. And we got Chris Jericho. What's up, Glorious Kev? How you doing? So we got we got the grinds boards lit. The grinders are ready. I got a cup of coffee. And we got Chris Righteous here. What's up, Chris? Tell everybody, welcome. Where are they where are you coming from and what are you playing right now, man? Yo, what's going on? What's going on, grinders? Happy to be here. Shout out to Jazz for having me on. We got, you know, uh, Gonna gonna be a pretty good show today, but shout out to everybody in the chat and who's watching this. And now nah, you know I've just uh I beat um East Nine. Yo, finally a, you beat that man. You were hyped for yeah, that coming out, and now you beat it. Awesome. Yeah, I beat it on nightmare mode, a nightmare difficulty. Um, which wasn't too bad. You know, I'm a Souls nice. player, so you know I'm used to you know harder games and stuff like that. But I, honestly, it wasn't too bad. You know, it's a, it's a niche action jrpg if a lot of people don't know but it's pretty good i like that i like that i definitely love the gameplay and the story was definitely better than the last game so i will give it that and then um I, yeah i just beat that and then right now i'm playing ratchet and clank the 26 oh yes they gave that when, away too it was in the yeah the but i already had it yeah yeah, yeah. I, no, I already had it. i just want to play it again oh it says you're like, quiet i'm maxing i'm making you louder here there we go oh see if that's better okay. jcat 
I just made him louder. Okay, yeah. that should be, uh, I don't know, that should be better, but yeah, no, I'm playing Ratchet and Clank, uh, the 2016 to kind of get myself ready for the, uh, the one that's coming out in June, June um, baby. Rift Apart, which, that, yo, June 11th, that is a, they, yo, they fucking me over with that day, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, no, I'm fucked over with that day because not only you got Ratchet and Clank coming out June 11th, um, and then the day prior to that you got the Final Fantasy VII remake, uh, the DLC, right for the P- PS5, and then now Guilty Gear, which is like one of my favorite. Oh, I played games. that man. That was pretty damn good. Yeah. Garuda was my uh, sensei. He was t- telling yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Like. Guilty Gear just got. It was supposed to come out in April, but now it got pushed back I'm, to uh... to June 11th. Yeah, so, man. you're making me choose between all three, and, and I'm only going to yeah. be able to choose two, and one got to take the back seat, and it's not going to be Final Fantasy, and it's not oh, going to be Ratchet yeah, and Clank. Final Fantasy comes out that time, too. Damn, June is crazy. Yeah, the DLC, so. <sighs> but not, man. Other than that, man, I've been playing games, beating games, you know. So, yeah, after I beat Ratchet and Clank, then I'm going straight into Persona 5 Strikers. Ooh. Right after Yes, I know. So, uh, Kofi's been playing that, right? He's been loving that game, man. Yeah, no, I've heard nothing but good about it, like nothing but positives and good about it. You know what I mean? A lot of people who has been playing it, even the reviews and stuff like that, like it's the it's in the eighties. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, a lot of good reception. Yeah, and, and I tried reviews. Persona. Now, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me, but I'm one of those people. I never played the Persona game at all. Persona Five. No, neither neither did I. You but, never played the, Persona Five. The, well, no, I played Persona Five. I'm See, talking I never about played Persona prior. Five, and then uh, no, and I, I had yeah. four on the Vita, like, but I never played it. Like, I never played it. I like, I was gonna, bu- actually, I never bought it on Vita because it was so expensive. I think it was like forty bucks on the Vita, or thirty. It was expensive on the Vita. Persona Four, I don't remember, but I didn't play any Personas. I tried streaming it for a little bit. People call me a coward, but I tried streaming it, and half of it was blocked. There was a blue screen. So yeah, I gotta stream it through the computer because I can't do it through the PlayStation because it blocks yeah. all the. Yeah, no, I, I mean it's not it's not for everyone. It's like if you, like I I don't know like I grew up playing a lot of like Japanese RPGs like like my favorite game of all time is like Final Fantasy VII. But I was playing mm-hmm. like Legend of Dragoon. I I was playing everything sure. right, but like the RPGs was my shit like back then growing up. But then I then I like kind of like grew out of it and like fell off during like the PS3. And 360 era, like yeah. it was like uh, all the shit was coming out was trash, mm. but um, but it kind of revitalized back this gen and and one of the main games that kind of like brought the genre like back to you know what I mean to new fresh life. Uh, I would I would definitely say it was Persona Five. Mm. So yeah, I I definitely yeah. want to play. I like the 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 vibe it's given off. I know a lot of people do, and uh, you know Strikers looks even cooler. It looks more action oriented definitely than the turn based. Uh, one so definitely I, I will eventually get to it. But uh, I yeah, it's an action it RPG. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's an action uh, RPG, which is my favorite genre. Mm. Action RPG. So we are talking about the Souls games, Bloodborne, yeah. <laughs> like, tell like you, Neo. Demon Souls like, broke me. I tell yeah. you, man, Demon Souls was the first Souls game that I played, and I tell you, I am I, I like it all. I've been hooked. You know that yeah, I, I, but the thing is, is that you got to yeah. be in the mental mind frame because you could be like if you were just in a in a rough, like if you just in a in a bad spot, it's it, it just it, it was the most frustrating thing ever. But like if you're on a roll, man, you feel empowered, man. When I um, it was such a man when I kill the when I was just exploring and, and killing the the, guy, the boss and stuff, I was like, holy crap! I killed that fat guy. I didn't even know what the hell I was supposed to do, but he was easy. But after that, that it was in the um, I forget the one with the uh, the Terminator guys, dude. That that level is crazy with the Terminators that come rolling at you and stuff. You get two of them come and get you in a corner, you're in trouble with those the, the Terminators. But um, yeah. but man, that Demon Souls, I, I'm really I really like it, and uh, you know I think it's it's pretty awesome. And uh, it was my first experience with a, with a Souls game because I always heard like you lose everything and all that stuff, and I was kind of pissed. I'm like, I don't want to waste my time with that. But actually, it's it's definitely um. Something that that you know you grow on you. Yeah, it just it, it sounds like something that's not fun in a video yes. game, and you, and, you, and for the most like, part, it usually isn't. Like like it's usually not, but it just works in Souls games, and it makes it rewarding. Like yes. it makes you just like it makes the experience of, like that more like like more intense, right? And you're like you, or suspenseful, like when you're trying to like 
you died and you're like, oh shit, I gotta get back, uh, you know, a million souls, right? That I mm -hmm. that I left behind, and then you, and then you have to go all the way back, and, but you gotta fight the same enemies that killed you. You know what I mean? So it's like it intensifies the action. It's like, oh shit, it's like I don't want to lose all these souls because if I do, then I can't level up, and if I can't level up, then I can't, you know, uh, be strong against these enemies and shit exactly. like that. So exactly. Yeah. But yeah, so for me, I've been playing. Uh, I've been doing my FIFA online. Been playing that, and then I've been also uh, playing some Demon Souls. I don't stream too much, uh, and then I also been playing. Uh, you know, I got back into my son and I have been kind of running around in the the Rocket League tournaments. Me and him in duos. Like he's really good, and and now he I have gotten better. I've been the aerial master now. I call myself. So we've been kind of like going into the interwebs and and going. I in never together. played Rocket League, man. I don't know. Why. I, I really never, never did. He had been playing it and since I have he was like it. four. I own it too. Like yeah, I have the game. He's been playing that thing since it's been it. four. But like we've been trying to get into the tournaments now, and like I've been me and him are doing split screen duos and, and like getting qualified for tournaments. And he wanted the pass, so we got the pass in that thing. So like we'll level. On, I'm leveling him up and stuff. Like we're playing. So you know, it's always. It, I tell you, it is a, a fun, a fun game, especially when you're doing couch co op kind of online against other people and like you're trying to you know go against them and, and rank up and stuff. But um, so I've been doing that, and then also been uh doing the um i've been doing the uh what is it the sack boys adventures i'm about halfway through sack boys adventures that is really oh yeah a cool game yeah for that stuff and then yeah that game looks, that game that game looks pretty good i heard it's like besides uh astro uh playroom i heard like um sack boys um adventure on the ps5 is like the second best game as far as like uh the utilization of the dual sense controller when it comes to like it, the you know what? it is like it, it's not as yeah. profound as as astrobot but it definitely has um it, it works like it, it's but i thought it was gonna be a little bit more like astrobot it's not astrobot is really pronounced with their controller but yeah. i'd say the ratchet thing, and clank is gonna be too dude i gotta <laughs> say the one thing though with, with sack boys adventure is the is the soundtrack like they got some real songs in there but just the music and the environments and how they interact with the music it, it really adds another layer to the game and uh and i tell you the textures of the the different cloths and fabrics and materials that they use really stands out and it uh it's a really it's a cool departure of when you're playing like the demon souls the call of duties and and the things like that uh you know i already went through spider-man three times but it is dry like i, I hit man three uh you know i've been playing that too but like i just like they did not differentiate that game too much from the other hitman like i feel like the environments are really the characters of what you're paying for whereas the the abilities that he does i just am not i'm just not feeling the hitman like you know i thought that they would they would do something a little bit more with it have a little bit more abilities but it's like once i do a mission like i had to infiltrate and kill somebody once i i, I did that like i don't want to go back and it's like well now you could be the chef and you could poison their food and then watch them drink it and and, and i'm like I already killed him. I want to go to the next level. Like, <laughs> I want to go back. Yeah, yeah. And now, <laughs> now I'm role-playing as the chef. And, well, I'm role-playing as the, the caretaker. And I have to sneak in with the mulch and so like that. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, once I go through it and I finish the mission, like, I'm kind of like, yep, I killed him. I got out. I'm done. You know? Right. But, uh, right. but yeah, that's the thing with the Hitman stuff. You know, um, the other stuff, like, really, uh, I haven't, I also... Another thing, you know, just to preface this stuff, is that I also got um, another, uh, I've been working with some, I, as everybody knows, I've been doing like a gaming laptop, like a laptop, and I went back with another gaming laptop. I'm like a, a gaming laptop person. I know people say shame, shame on me. Uh, PC Master Race goes gaming laptop, shame, shame, because of I don't get the thermals and you don't get the maximum performance out of these smaller chips. This is not a real desktop CPU. Well, I can tell you, GPU, I mean, I also have um, a Razer Core where I have a 980 Ti in that one, and I plug it in through Thunderbolt 3, and it uh, in, uses a desktop GPU with the, the the laptop, which is another setup that I've been rolling with for a while. But uh, I've been using the Alienware, but now I got a Razer Core, and I put my 980 Ti in there, which I plan on upgrading whenever we can find goddamn graphics cards, so probably getting a 30 or 40 uh, GPU just in there. But, but I tell you, man, gaming laptops got really slim now, Yes, they, I got to put them on some cooling pads, and you know the battery life is still like five hours, like, like five hours or so. But when you're gaming, they're like two. But I tell you, I love myself. Shame on me. See, Jemiah, see, this is what happens with PC Master Race. PC, see what happens. Jemiah is probably sitting there uh, doused in his RGB lighting, seeing what color he's gonna change it to tonight. Yeah. 
But yeah, see, shame on me. So that that's a if thing. I had a gaming laptop, that would be more like my secondary, like yeah. as far as like a complimentary, you know, like a compliment to like a PC or some shit like that. Like that's what I would use it. Like as far as primarily, you, I don't gaming. know if I would use Persona. it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and you know, the, well, the thing was, I got into the whole gaming laptop thing because when uh, well, Phil said games are going to PC, I was like, oh, I want a gaming laptop because that will be like my portable Xbox. Like I could take it with me and and yeah. you know take it with me and stuff. And that's what got me into gaming laptops. And then I found about the external GPUs, and now with Thunderbolt three and Thunderbolt four, now you could put anything in into those GP into those cases. And it basically is a plug and play, and it reads the external GPU, so you get desktop GPU performance. Now, of course, people are gonna say you could probably, you could probably get uh, one more powerful than the Series S, anyway. Oh know yeah, what I mean? <laughs> like you could, yeah, right. And yeah, you could, and and, so. the, and the Razer Core I got for like like a hundred and seventy dollars used, the twenty bucks. It was, it's just a shell. But what's cool about it is that it's really plug and play with the USB C now, and you could also output it to a display port to a TV. But the thing is, is people are like, well, you know, your CPU, the bottlenecks. The thing is, is that it reads an INTI. Yes, I'm probably not getting the top performance of the 980 Ti, but it is what it is. You know what? It does the job. I get to play. I have a 120, uh, 144 hertz refresh 2K screen right here that I'm looking at. I also have a 4K. But the thing is. I went with a 4K OLED gaming laptop, and that's a 60 frames per second, so Jemaya is going to say something about that too as he changes his RGB lighting on his desktop PC to green or blue or purple or pink. And uh, yes, I know, 60 frames per second, boo-hoo, PC Master Race, but you want to know what? Go play uh, Valhalla, whoever had a Valheim game or your Counter-Strike from uh, 30 years ago running at 400 frames. You know, PC gaming is definitely has its nuances. But um, Valheim, do you see that game? That looks like it's pushing some GPUs right there. I don't know if you saw that Steam, on Steam. But um, that's the hotness yeah. on PC right now is being a, a, a Viking in a world that looks like uh, Roblox. So uh, hopefully they like that. <laughs> that's some PC gamers up, man. They love getting them 3080s, 3090s. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to play them Roblox games and shit. Like Yo, that, man. Shout, out, play those... shout out to the PC gamers, man. I I, I rock with y'all, man. <laughs> yes, and Ash, I, I was I was listening to Ash and Lucas earlier. <laughs> Day and I was, my hands were frozen from being out in the soccer field. But I was trying to type as fast as I can because they were, she was talking about. Because shout out to Ashley Lucas, she's getting a, a a gaming PC that she that uh that's on their way from Corsair. The nerds are building it right now, and uh they but it's like you know everybody's like what about that GPU and this thing? But yeah, trust me, man. PC gaming, it's 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 your interpretation of whatever PC gaming is, and you know what. If it does the job, it does the job. And you want to know what? You could change all the settings and you could get that thing to run on a potato for half of these games. And you could jack it all up and you could take screenshots running at, you know, ultra resolutions and all this other stuff. Take a screenshot and it's running at one frame per second. And then you drop it down to your 1080p and call it a day. But um, anyway, enough of the PC talk. I'm done with PC. That was last week's talk with all the Jim goddamn Gordon Ramsay putting his PC, his PlayStation games on on the uh, on the, uh, the the PlayStation on the the PC there. So enough of Jim Gordon Ramsay. Um, Absolutely f- pathetic. Thank you, Jim Gordon Ramsay. Absolutely f- pathetic. <laughs> Goddamn, Jim Gordon Ramsay. Yo, that dude, he looks like Gordon Ramsay. I swear, he better he better open up Hell's Kitchen in PlayStation style. But we're gonna go. <laughs> Yo, man, PC dudes game different. That's damn right, man. But I tell you, man, it's all about the freaking glory. Oh, man, we got the PC war in the goddamn chat. Holy shit, we got to watch it. Guys, hit that like button. Guess what we're going to go? We're going to do the grinds board right now. We got some topics, but then we got the big juicy topic we're going to be talking about as part of the grinds board. But with that, let's go to see what's on the grinds board. we are the grinds board is here i'm going to tweet this out we're going to the grinds board please share the video out hit that like button hit that subscribe if you're new here we are growing the gaming grindhouse i ended it i added a new addendum to the uh to the building right now uh we have a 717 subscribers so 
We're, the grindhouse is growing. So thank you again for all your support. And we are going to the grinds board. Now, hopefully, every week I get yelled at about the text and uh, and if they can read it and all this other stuff. So hopefully you can read it this time. I, I You don't understand. I'm messing around like 20 minutes, different fonts, different colors, all that stuff. And uh, hopefully it's readable right now. And uh, let's see. Where we go to the grinds board? Where, oh, there we go. So can you guys read it this time? Can you read it? Let's see. I think so. I think it's readable. Let me just move it down. I think it's good. There we go. Okay. Oh, and one thing, too, I wanted to say, uh, just a, a Samba thing and a message, uh, you know, before I get into the topics here. But, yeah, the shout-out to, um, you know, the Iron, the Iron Lords uh, podcast for, you know, doing an amazing show and, you know, and rest in peace to iDizzy uh, and, you know, um, prayers out to his family. You know, it was really sad seeing that, um, you know, but it was amazing what they did over there at the Iron Lords. That, that show was incredible, and it's just a huge support to the community of what everybody – is about and uh you know it's a gaming point bringing people together so you know um and prayers out to everybody there but you know um just want to just uh say i'm sorry again and um <laughs> i just uh, you know game persona saying that stuff but yeah i just wanted to say mm -hmm. it's really um really just you know i just want to do uh just say that because that was some sad stuff that happened last week and you know it was after the show so i wanted just to put out that out there uh, and the yeah, rest was, in peace, I dizzy. Yeah, yeah and the ones did an incredible, peace. incredible show. It was amazing just hearing everybody with their stories with them, and um, yeah, it's great. It was great that they did. Yeah, he was a you know, he was a he was a real uh, he was a real good guy, man. He was a real nice guy. Yeah. Like I, I've been I've been I've interacted with him a couple times on you know in the comics and on Twitter and stuff like that. Not too much, but a few times. I still got tweets. That I, it's crazy. I was looking back at some of our tweets, and I got tweets from like years ago. Of like me and him talking about music and stuff like that, and you know he was always like a real chill and positive guy. He was never on no BS or drama or even console or anything like that. Like he respected everybody. So yeah, yeah man, uh, that's unfortunate what happened to him. But definitely my prayers and condolences for his, you know, his family, his wife, yeah. his kids. I was really and yeah, the Iron Lords. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was really sad. Like it took me back when I saw. It. I was like, oh, man. and then you see the the conversations and stuff. But yeah, it is uh. Yeah, but with that, I just want to just uh, you know. So I wanted to get to say that before we get into the the topic. So uh, and one thing I see somebody wrote something. Gaming with Persona said who who's the spacing is a bit off, but it's good. Thank you. My God, well, everybody seems to be an editor. <laughs> Chat. Um, I know the space. I couldn't fit it on my paper. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry I disappoint you with the grinds board, damn it. But the topics are here. So the first topic, Chris, I'm glad you're on here for the topic. So yes, sir. the Sony M.2 drive support rumored for summertime. Uh, okay. Dude. So. I, yeah, because everybody, because, okay, so the whole situation is, like, Sony or Mark Cerny at the beginning of last year, right, when he did his presentation. Yes. Uh, he said, you know, hopefully by the holidays or hopefully by the time the PlayStation 5 launches that they will already have, you know, um, kind of curated a list of like the third party M.2 drives that are safe to put in your PlayStation 5, you know, make sure it doesn't overheat and stuff like that. But I think that COVID definitely affected the testing of that. Mm -hmm. So they, they probably delayed that because I think what they, from my understanding, and I could be completely wrong because I didn't look too much into this so you know don't don't take my word for it but i heard it's uh the reason why you know it's taking a while is because they're trying to make sure that these third-party m.2 cars can, you can put in your playstation and it doesn't fuck up the playstation overheats and shit like that mm. you know what i mean so so that's why you, you heard things about they're also going to increase the fan speeds and stuff like that during this update as well too so yeah. but yeah but everybody's been hammering for it you know because people they gotta have a thousand games that they're not even gonna play on their hard drive, right? <laughs> well, you know Call of I mean? Duty, you gotta dude, my Call Duty gotta stop them. it though, man. Call of Duty just gotta yeah. stop. Well, yeah, Call of Duty. I was trying to find those 4K tech, those texture packs and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, I gotta uninstall this. I had to uninstall Bug Snacks. God damn, uninstall Bug Snacks. But like, you know, man, it's just the friggin'. See, I'm one to keep stuff on the the the, the hard drive. 
I'm like a, a hoarder. I just put yeah, a lot you're of stuff a hoarder. Hundred. That's yeah, what I do. Digital hoarder. I'm a digital hoarder yeah. because I don't know what I want to play. And you know, if I'm sitting there and I like, yo, I got three hours to play a game tonight, I don't want to sit there and say an hour and a half of my time is going to be me downloading this thing because my time is precious. So I want that stuff on there. So I'm excited for the M.2 drives. I've seen sales on these drives, like you know, uh, some of the Evo drives and things like that. But uh, the crucial. Uh, one I actually I put one I have ones in my laptop uh, like two terabyte ones for like uh, two hundred bucks, uh, but I'm hoping those things work. Now the one thing though I did notice and, and I don't know where I saw it. That's why I'm not gonna pull it up because I'm not sure. But I saw somebody opening up the M.2 drive in the PlayStation and they said that it's really large. Like it's actually it, it can maybe fit some with heat sinks or something like that. Like there's some extra room in there. Um, for that stuff, yeah, I didn't I don't crack know it open about yet. That. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. crack it open yet, but uh, you know, I definitely think they're gonna send the compatibility list out. The one thing that I always said, which was beneficial with this method, yes, it wasn't ready at launch. Yo, what's up, Justin? Um, but the thing, <laughs> but the one thing though that it wasn't ready at launch was that this approach I felt was better because it's an open market approach, whereas there's competition, there's different, there's different marketing. We get it from. Not just Amazon, but you can get it from Newegg and, and all this other stuff where these things might go on sale and there's a competitive market for different M.2 drives. Um, whereas Microsoft was kind of going back to the memory card type route. So that price is only for that thing. Now, if they drop it down on price because they put out a two terabyte one, you know, that other one's like $230. But that's the only option you have right now to store that kind of speed and to put that speed on there. Now, the one advantage, though, that Microsoft does have is that you can put Series X enhanced games, I guess, on the you could store them onto the external hard drive, but you got to bring them over to the main hard drive if you want to play them. So that's what the Xbox does. The Sony doesn't allow you to put any PlayStation 5 games on an external drive, like as off storage, so that you could just copy it to the main drive. You just you just install it to the main drive. So, um, so yeah. So, that's that's one difference where you could actually kind of store Series X enhanced games. But you can't run them from the external drive. You can only store them there. But, hey, you know what? The thing is, is they, they said this at first. This is not a surprise. You know, this is not a lie. Not Gordon Ramsay didn't lie about this one. They said that they were going to give a couple compatible M.2 drives later. Hopefully soon after launch. And... You know, maybe they come out with the list and then the compatibility comes out in summer. Now, was it summer or was it spring? I don't remember. I thought it was summer. That's why I put summer in here. I thought it was rumored for the summer. I think around. they. I think. I think it is rumored for the summer, but I it's don't know. a rumor I don't too. Know how, yeah. Who knows? It could be spring. It could be spring update. Who yeah. Knows? And there's supposed to be some sort of update coming to another rumor again about these updates, adding the the VRR, the variable rate, rate shading, whatever. It helps you not have screen. So like. Yeah, because you know the frame drops and everything like that. But uh, the yeah. PS Five has been, you know, extremely solid with sixty FPS games. So it's like, dude, you know, exactly. So we really don't need VR, yeah. which hence brings us me to. I'm not, no, I'm not going to say the, the PS Five doesn't topic. need it, but I'm just saying it's like <laughs> so far, like the games have been, you know, running to the point where it's like it, it, you don't need that technology for those games and stuff. But like you also that. need but, the yeah, TV. It, it's going to come. Yeah, and you yeah. need a display too. Right, like, you need for, a TV for that too. For for that stuff to to handle with those those drops. So like that's the other thing. Like it's not just the capabilities of the machine because Xbox has it at the V the variable rate the VRR or whatever the VRS. So the the basically it prevents like you know you get rid of the screen tearing. Um, but you need a display that supports that, and only like kind of higher end TVs and things like that, like your old ass TV mm -hmm. from last year. Your OLEDs and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, now th that brings to the next topic, and this kind of thing that's been going on with um, with Xbox and and PlayStation with these third party things. They just did now a re uh, a kind of a weird update. You know, the thing is that's going on. I don't want to mute this stuff, but the thing is that's really going on is that it seemed like everybody's kind of like scrambling to to do something with old games like either they're going to remake them and or resell them or add some enhancements to old games update them so everybody kind of is doing their old things a little differently uh some are actually making full-blown next versions yeah. and they're trying to charge for them some are doing them next versions and making them for free some of them saying like hey you know what here's an old game but we're going to make it like super enhanced to recognize the new hardware and i think that's where this one came in with this need for speed but 
the thing is that I wanted to talk about because we've seen this before. And again, this is no means saying that, you know, that this is like game changing and end of world kind of up. like this. This is minuscule stuff. But the fact right. that Digital Foundry makes money on this stuff and they put this stuff out there, you know, I wish Digital Foundry goes away because I think they're useless right now. Um, they should be really. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather watch com- uh, NX Gamer. I'd rather watch. Him. Yeah, like they. He I don't like the commentary. Detail. I don't like their predictions. I don't like their. Oh, this is a bug. Or we got to contact the devs. Like they're the saviors. You know what? Yeah. I think they just need to be quiet. Let the games run, and that's it. But I really what they think what they should be doing is compare the consoles to PC. I think that will be more of a lucrative comparison compared to like different graphics cards versus the con- the new consoles rather than you know going like well this drops frames right here at this section on an Xbox but on PlayStation it doesn't do that and it's just all the nitpicking stuff and it's so annoying but anyway yeah they are going hard with the remaster Jamai. I'm noticing a lot of that shit yeah they, they are, everybody the video game grab. industry the the video game industry is becoming a lot like the movie industry it was like like after a while like 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 there was like barely any original like movies <laughs> as far as like the story, idea. so so they started like redoing movies or they started like taking uh taking books right like a lot of books and then making movies off of those books or comic books making movies off of them shits like that. So it's like, yeah, the remasters and the remakes that that's that's here to stay, man. Because know, that's, man. that's like every industry does that, you know what I mean? Entertainment like. They they want to like you know uh, uh, give new life and new fr- you know for people who wasn't around back then to play these <laughs> games so they can make money off of them, you know what I mean? And yeah. to me, it's like obviously there's different levels, right? There's different levels of remasters. And yeah, remakes. they're all doing Not different all of them things. Are the same. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are vastly enhanced. Some of them are just like, you know what I mean? So obviously it's a case by case basis. But to me, it's like shit. I'm 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 with it, man. I'm 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 with it. Like there's definitely some old games that I would like to be remastered that I would like to play again, especially if they have like you know a, a set of trophies and shit yeah. like that. Especially that during the drought miss. times, like especially yeah. like the times like I like I always know like that the first quarter after a console launch is always like the worst because like you really. They, they put everything up near the, the holiday season, and then what they do is, like, January and February is just, like, quiet. And what's interesting is that usually Capcom was the one for the last few years to kind of carry January and February, like, with Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and then the Resident Evil 7. Like, they kind of, and Monster Hunter was another kind of early release, like, in January, February. And then this year, we really just had Hitman, really, and that, that was kind of it, Hitman 3. Um, and, and I, you know, we could say COVID and all that other stuff, but it's just like, it's been kind of dry and, uh, you know, and everybody's just doing these remastered things. But the thing is though, is that I noticed and this, and the reason why I bring this up is because it's something that happened during the Xbox one X and the PlayStation four pro. And one of the things was, is that it seems like on Xbox, the devs decide just to jack up the resolution at a higher resolution at the at the mer- at the risk of having performance dips and performance kind of hiccups whereas PlayStation keeps a, a lower resolution than the One X but has a much smoother gameplay and I'm yeah. seeing and and we saw this throughout this the One X PlayStation 4 Pro kind of window that they fought in and and now- it's not even by much neither like yeah. the like the resolution disparity is is super small like you ain't gonna really you ain't gonna notice man i know like because like, what was it what was it it was something like i know it was like 2066 for like xbox and then like something like i don't know some some other crazy number right it was it's definitely above yeah, the resolution is just like, I, uh, when the pixel is like is that it? high and shit like that it's like it, is, it barely becomes notable noticeable yeah. at that point and so, it also happened in outriders i think as well where it's running at a high resolution but then Somebody was showing NX Gamer. Yeah, somebody posted up photographs, and it was showing like zoom ins, and the PlayStation looked like it had a little bit sharper textures than the the Xbox version. And it could be because you know, and even though the Xbox is running at a higher resolution, it could be some. I I don't know why this is happening, but the thing is, is that it shouldn't happen. Yo, what's up, Salty? How you doing, man? Glad you're feeling better. And glad you're back, man. Can't wait to get back on the yeah, Salty yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Salty. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm glad he's better, too. 
Yeah, man. Definitely. So, uh, yo, if you're free, Salty, I know if you, I, I don't know what, what your what your status is, but you could jump on into the grinds board. We got it. The grinds house is open. We have a little bit of a jaw door. We have some guests coming on a little later, but man, me and Chris are just rolling through the grinds table right here, right? The grinds board. But what I want, yeah, you know what you that, forgot to put on the grinds board too? What you forgot to you forgot to put? It was a, it was a big it was a big well. It was a report, right? Uh-oh. It's still not. Is this something? It's still that, not it's, official from Nintendo. But it Nintendo. was a report about the new Switch. Oh, yeah. We get uh, it. You, f- you don't care? You don't care? Hey, I care about this. I, I care about it. I care about it. <laughs> oh man, we could add the grind. I don't know, grind. Should we add the Nintendo Switch or Pro OLED? Yo, we don't even Super what, Mario we, yeah. Edition. We, yo, we don't even got to spend that much long on it. All right, well, let me you let's know. finish this whole this whole performance thing. Yeah, because the biggest thing here is that this should not happen. If you have that kind of overhead, and the thing is, is the problem is that Microsoft built their house on the power best console in the world narrative and the thing is is that they built this if it was the fans yo man hey everybody some there's people that love the cleveland browns you know what i mean you can't blame the fans but when the cleveland browns are running around saying we're gonna win the super bowl and then they don't even make the goddamn playoffs dude you should have shut up so like this is the thing like you marketed this most powerful console that is your marketing it's on your website it's everywhere and it should not be doing this at all. It should be equal, equal or better than your competition because you made that marketing claim. Now, if you cannot enforce it and be like, well, you know, lazy devs or something like that, well, maybe that wasn't the smartest thing to bank your 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 whole console on. Play your old games better, but then when you look at the old games, the old games are actually playing better, smoother on your competition. That's the problem that that Microsoft has built is that they built their house on this performance gap, and it's just not there. Now people say Tim the Toolman Tail is coming. They're saying that you know he's bringing the tools. Hopefully he doesn't show up a goddamn Fisher Price tools and a squeaky hammer. But the thing is, is that this shouldn't happen. And you know what else shouldn't have happened? The 900p and 1080p because this is reeking a lot of similarities to that where it's like. Why is the Xbox running at a lower resolution than the PlayStation 4? They're the sim- Why? Well, the PlayStation has better RAM. And, it's like, but, and then Phil's like, well, we took out Kinect and we get a better SDKs. So we get more power going to the console. Still didn't improve the 900p to 1080p. To this day. To this day. All Listen, ES RAM is um, gone. It still made the console. The S still runs lower 900p resolutions. The 1S. To this day, so I I don't I I don't know what it is, but whatever they say stinks. It doesn't work. They just need to shut up. Um, yeah, no. Nah, what it comes down to, and like honestly, it's like I'm kind of tired of this topic <laughs> <laughs> because it's like we're gonna keep having it over and over and over. Do you again think you think this is not? You don't think the tools are coming? Um. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. But like. But. I, I I believe the same thing for the PS5. Like I believe so, both of the consoles are gonna get better. Like so, uh, but it's like what it comes down to is like I like what I've been saying is that both of these consoles are, are gonna be more evenly like as far as like third party is like most of the third party are, are gonna be then like parity is gonna be like equal and shit like that. And if there's uh-huh. any differences, the differences are gonna be small no matter which ones slightly on top or which one's slightly below or some shit like that but it's yeah like, it's gonna be what it what it what it comes what it comes down to is people overhype the power of the xbox series x and they underestimated uh the tech of the playstation 5 so when mm. you have those two matched together like you have one that's overhyped you have the same person overhyping the power but then underestimating what the playstation 5 is doing then, then, then the, that's why it's a big deal, right? That's why yeah. it's a big deal right now. And people continue to talk about it and stuff like that. Cause he's like, oh, I thought the 12 T flops is going to be always on top and shit like that. It's like, nah, it's like, you don't know, or full RDNA 2, right? Oh, the Xbox Series X has full RDNA 2. Oh, the don't PS5 even, uh, dude, I covered that. Custom and shit like that. It's I like, covered that. You don't even understand. Like, there's still, it's still mystery things about the PS5 that it, people don't know because it's custom. Dude. You know I had I mean? a very like, people don't know. Dude, so I had a very like, in depth coverage of, of the of the RDNA and, and yeah. Phil DNA. 
um, in everybody's eyes. I had a very in-depth coverage. Uh, Grinders, if you remember that episode, they yelled at me because my mic blew out everybody's eardrums. But I had very in-depth research of the RDNA, one, um, 3DNA, uh, very in-depth. I had slides and everything. I don't know. Did you catch that episode? I don't know if you caught that episode because I, it was incredible. The amount of detail I went into, I guess. I guess Chris didn't watch that episode, Grinders. Do, do we remember that? I, I think, I, you know what? We got, what, we, got over, <laughs> yeah, we got over, yeah, we got over 50 some people watching here. Hit that like button. We're, I mean, you know what? Just for the fun of it, we're going to go back to my in depth coverage of our DNA. Since you brought it up, I, you know, we got, we got to talk about this, the our DNA. I think, where was it? Was it over here? I think it was when Phil and Drew. Right, let's go back to the grinds board. Let's we're go going back. back to the grinds board. Now, I, where I didn't want to, I didn't want to open this conversation back up. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Go. No, you gotta, uh, there is right, it. Go ahead, I think, go ahead, go ahead. Hold on. I think it's somewhere around here, I think. My in-depth coverage, uh, maybe not. Maybe it wasn't this episode. No, there was one I wrote it in. Uh, oh, here it is. Yes. Uh, here I covered it right here. Yeah. Hold on. So, so here, here just listen a to the grinds, guys. If you haven't DNA two, listen. If I you haven't caught this episode, I went into very in-depth coverage of of this. So hit that like button. Um, and, and you know, Chris brought it up, man. He brought it up, and I got I got to show it. So we got to go into my in-depth coverage. Chris, if you missed it, I'm going to play it right here for everybody because this is a show. had some slides. Here we go. A DNA. Then the PlayStation 5 because um, the scans don't show it. it and, and I don't know what's coming from. And I, and I researched this. And it's, it, it's a, it, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm, you know what? Let me just do the presentation. So hold on. Let me pull up my presentation here. So I, I really researched this. So grind this. <laughs> Uh, you know, hit the like button, you know, and then, you know, listen to this guy. This is going to be very educational. We're going to spend the next about 30 minutes going 30 over. 30 minutes RDNA I went into this. And all DNA 2 and seeing, you know, that the PlayStation, um, the PlayStation is in trouble. And uh, the Xbox maybe have better. I don't know. But it's it, the tools are here. And, and you know what, Tails, like, Tails, this is it. So I'm going to just do run my presentation here. Hold on. So, so here's exhibit A about the all DNA 2. And an RDNA one. So um, here we go. Let me see. Do I have it sharing? Yeah, I do. Okay. So here's the presentation. There's 20 more slides there. Get the fuck out of here. Here it is. Xbox, PS5, have RDNA two. Next fucking topic. We're done. Research over. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> AMD's website. I'll give you the links in the goddamn fucking descriptions. Let's move on. Holy shit. <laughs> the fuck out of here with this bullshit on DNA my ass. <laughs> there it is. You want to see it, go back in slow motion and read the fucking page. Our DNA 2s in both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox. Get the fuck out of here. Let's move on. There we go. There's my in-depth coverage. Dude, I just want to let everybody know about that. I don't know if you heard that. But that was my in-depth coverage. I covered it fully. You please use that that show as a reference slide. I think it was episode seven when uh, Eddie Murray, Drew Murray, whatever, left the left the initiative. But everybody's good. It's all good. Perfect Doc is fine, even though the guy left before the game even come out. And he built the team and ran away, but nobody talked about that that week. Everybody was talking about Bethesda. No, yeah, but Eddie Murray took a friggin' he took a he took a hike. He went out of there. He's like, "Here's Perfect Doc. Uh, yeah, bitch, I'm out of here. Holy shit, he's gone." But nobody brought that up. Nobody brought that up. But anyway, Eddie Murray, Drew Murray, Bill Murray, whatever the hell his name is. And he went back to Insomniac, too. Holy shit. Damn. No, nobody talked about that. Dude, that, that, that news went in one ear, out the other ear, out the asshole, and nobody even talked about it. <laughs> Drew Murray leaving friggin' the, the initiative and then going right to Insomniac. Holy shit. Where did that news come from? Grinds my gears covered that shit because nobody else did. Dude. Oh, man. Glorious Kev said that was one of the deepest dives of um, of research right there. That, you, you know what? It took me a while. <laughs> it took me a while to, to, to bring up that slide, that presentation. All right. Back to the... God damn it. That, 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 <laughs> that deep dive deserves more likes. God damn. I'm Grinds Foundry right there. That's some Grinds Foundry shit right there. You want to you wanna see some in-depth yeah. coverage. Yeah, my bad, chat. 
Anyway, I didn't mean to bring it up. Yeah, <laughs> I had to bring. I had, I had to bring that up. I had to listen to my in-depth coverage of Grind Foundry. So now let's see. I'm now. I'm, okay, so now we're at the. Okay, we're done with the third party. Chris, Chris wanted to talk about the enhanced Super Mario Brothers or the the, the new Switch OLED 720p. If you plug it into a dock, it gets up to 4K. So there's this rumors going on right now, right? Yeah. And uh, that they're going to come out with this OLED thing, right? Yeah. Well, it was reported. Okay, so it, it's reported by Bloomberg. And they're Bloomberg, yes. Yeah, like, so it was actually substantial. Yeah, so, yeah, this is not no Reddit post. That, right, and they're reporting it with confidence. So it's like, you know, so and they're pretty credible. So, yeah, pretty much, yeah, like what you say, it's going to be like a 7-inch screen, which I think the current switch is like a 6.1 or some shit like i don't know it right it's gonna be bigger than the current switch right um if the screen is still gonna be 720p which i was disappointed with that i was hoping yeah for at it's gonna be old right? screen yeah it's gonna be OLED. so i mean at, at, at that size or whatever is like plus a lot of these switch games are, aren't native like they're they're not even hitting 720p some of them are like 540 and 600 and 300 and shit like that so you know, but it was still a little disappointing. But they're talking about like it's gonna be able to display 4K. You know what I mean? So um, I highly doubt it's gonna be able to do 4K gaming. I yeah. highly fucking, I highly doubt that. But it's gonna be able to at least clean the image up. You know, to make the <laughs> the image quality at least up to like you know 4K TVs and stuff like that. So my only thing is nobody's been talking about performance. That's all I care about. If we're gonna get a new switch and, and it's gonna be slightly more powerful than the old model. Make that shit perform- at least have lock frame rates, man. Like, mm, yeah, like, I don't know damn, about like, that, yo. They don't have a freaking achievement system of frame, frame rates. rates. They don't yeah. know what the hell frame rate is. Right. They don't have like right. they have a perfect right. achievement system too, like with coins and stars. Like you earn a star to get a full hundred. Like a platinum is a star, and basically you get Mario coins for achievements. Like they have it in the books, but they just refuse yeah, to man, do I it. Love dude. That too, man. They just refuse yeah. to do it. Uh, but the thing is, is like, hey. Nintendo, they have done the 3D XL. They've done the Slims. So it's definitely the natural progression of this system, especially when both the strongest systems of the next gen of the PlayStation 5 and the Series X are out there for Nintendo yeah. to release and also, a powerful console. Also, what's interesting, too, is because since Switch is powered by NVIDIA, you know, chips and shit like that, um, they're also talking about DLSS for the Switch. So that could be something really? that's very interesting. Yes. That could be something that. that's 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 good news for like some of the third party games, mm. you know. So you, the yeah. thing is too is that like, you know, and, and a lot of people can't deny. This. I am sure everybody would love to see, you know, these games running at higher resolutions on their TV. You know, like a kind of like a super clean, even though they're clean already, given like you know the resolutions that they're running. Um, but like have that running at a higher resolution at 40 4K 60 or something like that off a switch on your TV playing Smash or something like that. Like I do think that people it would I think Nintendo games will like you know benefit from that resolution bump and with a frame rate. Like you know they get the frame rates yeah, down. Yeah, but resolution yeah, bump. Yeah. I mean huh? like, listen, that one thing that Nintendo is not lacking in is is video game right it's like yeah. actual good quality games and stuff like that even if you don't like them you can still respect that nintendo is still like one of the ones that's still pushing you know uh, uh, uh exclusives and stuff like that so yeah man like pff, that's what i'm saying like yo i would love a breath of the wild like but to, but with like playstation 5 graphics and shit like that yeah I mean, that would be like so amazing and shit like that but obviously nintendo is they're not gonna do that, but was like the new technology. The thing about Nintendo also is that they're very, they're real cheap. They're very, very cheap. Like they make sure they don't sell any of their hardware's at a loss. Like none of their hardware's they sell at a loss. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus Sony and Microsoft, they're willing to take the loss for the better tech. You know. Yeah. So, Nintendo just has their quirks, yeah. like the way they're gonna roll, and you know. Um, right. But the thing is, is like you know, Nintendo more power. Everybody loves that idea. So I'm sure this thing will probably be 300. I don't even know. This thing might be even 400, 350. I don't even know. What do you think this would be? Like, yeah. would they drop the price of the Switch? Ooh. It's flying off the shelves at 300. dollars Do the, you think? The, what? I mean, 400. I don't know. But like, if they do, if they do, if they say no, nah, this one is going to be 300, they're going to have to drop the other Switch. 
to two fifty because they already have a two hundred dollars switch That's light. Thinking, and I don't know, yeah. if, and I don't know if they were willing to drop because that one just came out yeah. not that long ago. So I, I don't right. know if they're willing to drop that down to one fifty. So if they do, right, or this will probably just be a replacement, complete replacement. You know what I mean? Of of they'll start phasing out the other ones. You know what I mean? That the retailers will have them on sale, or whatever, and then this will be like the official replacement of the old model. As gotcha. Well. So we'll, we'll see. But they're also talking about um, having games that can only run on this new ah, yeah. as well. Just like the new 3DS. Uh-oh. I don't know if you That's know That's the Bowser Ness. We call that the Bowser Ness, man. You got to watch them. That yeah. Nintendo Ness. Whatever the hell that is. That is yeah. the Ness. Nintendo the original will Ness. do it. Oh, they and will. they'll get away with it. And people will, be, people will complain. But it, it doesn't matter. They'll still buy it. I so. know. But, hey, you know what? I just saw that I said the grinds door was ajar, and I see Frogs and Link have joined us. They're getting ready. They're getting ready to get their seats at the grinds table. So if you guys had any oh, yeah. comments, yo, what's up, Frogs? How you doing, man? Man, and I'm pretty I see good, Link. man. Just listening to the conversation, man, about, about Nintendo and the, and the possibility of a, of a new Switch, man. And I, I think a three ninety nine price point is is where they could hit, mm. and uh, cause I, cause I kind of look at what PlayStation Five is did, you know, and I think they can come in three ninety nine, and I think they can say, yeah, there's certain games that are only for this system, and this is our next generation. I mean, because and the reason I think they can do that is because the Switch is still gonna have longevity, the the base model Switch. I mean, shoot, I've I've been I'm on my second Switch now because my first one had a, like a, I guess they call it the blinking. Uh, doc, doc of death. It just blinks and it doesn't show on my screen. Yeah, you're telling me about that. Having... Yeah, so I think they can come at three ninety nine. Um, mm-hmm. and and I think they can, you know, I I think that you know the thing with with the Switch is uh, they have the ability to uh, Nintendo has the ability as a gaming company only to just keep pumping out that first party uh, software, and I think software is important. Even if it's kind of like, you know, some, some weak ports, because uh, I've seen some people in the chats, I, I kind of agree with the weak ports, but I think Nintendo is like, well, we can just pump this out here because people love it. We can Nintendo is a company out, you know, I, I, with the, with the regards to like gaming, they're one of those companies, man. I don't know what it is about them. They can seem to just give you uh, some old stuff. And for some reason it will sell. I don't know if it's nostalgia. I don't know if it's just... You know, it's just people. I don't know what it is. This is like people will run out and buy it. You know, it's nostalgia like, and the and the branding. And yeah, the I, I don't yeah. like. I don't. I don't yeah. think that for the Nintendo most part. Brand. I, don't, I don't think that Sony, uh, PlayStation, or even Microsoft's Xbox. I don't think they can really do that. I think they got to rebuild that game from the ground up, brand new. Nintendo can like, oh, here's, you know, uh, Link to the Past, and we're gonna put it on a freaking cartridge with, you know, uh. The Zelda Part One and Zelda Part Two from the original NES, so that's the, the SNES and the Suit Two NES for $60. games and, for sixty dollars, and people will go, Oof. Buy it, you know, and that's it's sad to say, but people will buy it. So I think it's now, the style it because I I can honestly tell you, like you know, you know, when I think about gaming, you know, I've been gaming for a long time, but man, I started Nintendo was like you know that was it, like it wasn't anybody else, it was Nintendo, and um. Yeah. When I look at it now, yeah, it's more of other consoles, you know, and more of other games, but I still always own a Nintendo product no matter what. Even if I primarily play on, on PlayStation 5 or, or Xbox or whatever, I always got to own a Nintendo system. So I think they just have, they, they that's I'm, just the name. Man. You know, Frog, I'm going to tell you what yeah. they do, what they've been doing. What they've been doing, though, is that they'll keep the game relatively similar to the different generations. But what's the unique aspect is that they make the console have unique sets of features or, or, or things that make the game, di- like, that make the experience different. Not the game different, but the experience different. Like, you know, the Wii with the waggles and yeah, everything. The gimmicks. The gimmicks, yeah. basically. And then they go the Wii U. Well, it has a second screen. like, a, And then you got a DS. Uh, it has the map and they're racing up the top. And then I'm at the map at the bottom. I can use the stylus. Then they basically the 3DS go. The is, is 3D. The, yeah, or 2D. Yeah. We could turn, yeah, the 2D now and big screen. And it's two screens. And then they go, well, now let's do the Wii U with the remote. And now let's do the Switch where you can take it on the go. You could play the thing. And now they go to Switch Lite where it's just a portable. And now they go to Switch Pro. Now at 
4K, you could play Mario Golf and Mario Kart and all that other stuff. And that's what they do. Like, they just make the console, the hardware, the kind of the feature, and the game kind of stays similar to it. Now, they update the games, like, you know, what it is, but very minor. Like, there's still the core mm-hmm. essence of the same game you played, just maybe new characters, new things, you know, and things like that. But I don't know. But, yeah, we added that in there. That wasn't... One of the topics, the link. Did you have anything about the Nintendo Switch OLED? Um, I do not care. Yes. So, okay. So. Next topic. Woo! Yeah. That's exactly uh, what listen, we need to hear. Listen, <laughs> they can absolutely get away with a $3. Yo, Link, put in that. Uh, all they gotta do is. Buy the thing. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy it. Link, you don't I need really to don't elaborate. Care. That, that was plenty. That was plenty yeah. of feedback. That's all we needed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I buy the hardware. I buy a few of their exclusives and. Keep moving, you know. That's by it. Mario. That's you know. it. It's like a drug. So you just do that and get you hit. Third party games. I don't buy any third party games on the Switch. Uh, yeah, me neither. Play a few of their exclusives because they run like either. trash. <laughs> yeah. So there's no reason to <laughs> yeah. try it. So Hellblade yeah. on the Switch. Anybody? Anybody beat it? <laughs> that was that <laughs> your first experience. <laughs> Hellblade on the Switch. But um, so. Hey. Now, the next topic here, and just I threw this in there. I knew we were going to talk about the big one now. I'm glad everybody's here. But one of the things is that the, this didn't come out last week. It came out later. It was really weird how late the PlayStation Now announcement came out. But, like, they added um, – I just had this picture here for the PlayStation Now games that they added. And uh, they added uh, Infamous Second Son, Ace Combat 7, and World War Z. Uh, I think they might have added a couple other games to there. Let me see. Yeah, there were a couple of other games. I can't think what they were. Super were Hot. A of Super them. Hot was one of yeah. them. There you go. Yeah, Which I, I play that. Were, I, I like it better in VR. The announced are the, are the main ones. Yeah, I like it better in VR. I did not like Super Hot. Oh, not yeah, in definitely. VR. I didn't like it. The, once I played the VR, it was hard to go back and play the other one. Yes, Which I agree. One, what? Super Hot. Super Hot. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely a game made for VR. In VR, it's friggin' awesome. Like, in, in yeah, the, when we're awesome. using the controller as a first person, I'm like, eh, it's not as great. Um, but, uh, and then the one thing I just want to say, like, you know, the thing is, that's really interesting is that Sony is really stacking up the call of duties in their services, both PlayStation now and in PlayStation mm-hmm. plus, like they've been adding call of duties in there. And I think that, you know, it's pretty interesting that, um, you know, that they've been getting those in there, um, as well. And some of the WWE, I think battlegrounds, there's a battlegrounds that got in there, but this, look at the stuff that they've been putting in here. Like, yes, this is not day and date. This is not stuff, but like. You can't shake your head and be like, this is just, like, you know, this is not games of gold. I'll tell you that. But, like, the thing is, if you look at these games that they've been adding in PlayStation Now for uh, $60 or $44 a year, dude, like, I know that these are not, like, the the games. and, And I know a lot of people don't go crazy, like, you know, hyped for this stuff and, you know, no TV shows about this thing, uh, web shows. But, like... You know, they had a Detroit, Call of Duty, Black Ops 2, Battlegrounds, Surviving Mars Crew 2, Frostpunk, whatever the hell that thing is, Horizon, Wreckfest, Injustice 2, Rage 2, Detroit Become Human, like, uh, not Detroit, I already said that, but uh, Days Gone, which is now Games Gone, it went on, it's going on PC in the summertime, Games Gone. and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, on Friday 13th, but like, yeah, I'll tell you, man. They they've been putting some friggin' decent games in there. And then now they're doing the days of play with or not days of play, but that free thing that they call stay at game at home, where they're gonna give games uh-huh. one a month. So they just did Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, the stay at home. The yeah, stay at home initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah which that's I, which that's I cool. think is I mean, smart. That's really smart. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they're doing it really. smartly with like, okay, they're dropping Ratchet and Clank obviously because Rift Apart is coming out, you know, in June, not not too long from now and stuff like that so they say they got more so i wonder if they do that with horizon you know or some shit like that so we'll see mm-hmm. yeah but i just wanted to just put a shit out there because like you know everybody talks about values in games and all this other stuff but like you know everybody goes playstation now sucks and it's like okay like dude no like, playstation now is no definitely it's, come on a man lot it's yeah. definitely gotten a lot better it's, it's definitely, just definitely the drop in a lot people just want to dismiss games. it very quickly and you know these are just yeah. look at what it's they've been putting in this Sony thing Sony is not focused market it like that. Yeah. They don't market it like that. They put it on so sale though. They it, yeah, <laughs> when they put, yes. when they put yes, something yes. pretty when they put something good in there, you know, they put a little thing out, but they don't make it it's not their bread and butter. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can tell they're more focused on uh PlayStation Plus. Definitely. That's yeah, and that's an addition. And like I said, those two plus, together hey, are 120 a year if you don't do it on you sale. See, 
and you see where Jim Ryan said they're going to be releasing more new new games in there. So yeah, um, they're definitely trying to build their plus uh, subscriber Action. base on PlayStation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, you got to think about also uh, with the whole membership service. Uh, you know, uh, I will say Xbox. They were above the power curve when they, you know, the whole Xbox Live because they started originally from the original Xbox and. And you know they they when the 360 came out it really grew rapidly because you know obviously it released a year ago you know before Sony system and you know when it came to just uh you know uh, a service you know you had to have the service to play online but I think what really uh, helped them is you know with this with the last generation we just got out of with the PS4 Xbox One I think that competition really made Sony say you know what we have to do something in, in completely entirely different because Sony said, well, we're going to start charging people this PlayStation Plus fee to play online. We got to give them something. Okay, you know what? We'll give them some games here and there. And then Microsoft, with the beginning of you know the Xbox One generation, said we need to do the same. And I think what really happened when you're looking at it now, I think the quality of games that, that Sony's uh, able to give, I, I think, you know, uh, especially with the, so many first-party games, let's, let's just say first party games that may have did well, but didn't sell maybe to the expectations. So it's like a game like Infamous Second Son, which you can say, whether you can say you did not you did or didn't like it, for it to be added to a plus or Infamous First Light, it, they're good quality games. It's something that you're like, oh, this was this is something I didn't catch, but this is something that's fun. I, 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 I didn't pick this up, but now that I'm playing it, it's not as bad as people said it is. Whereas, you know, I think, um, unfortunately, you know, the other companies, with the exception of Nintendo, I'll just say Xbox doesn't have the ability to really give you um, the the first party titles in there like that because they just don't have the lineup that Sony has. You know, Sony is able to just, just to put a lot of stuff in there. But the thing is, too, is that it's not even the first party games that are going into the Game Pass, but just PlayStation now, just PlayStation just seems to have these partnerships or these these things where they're getting games in into their system pretty, like pretty pretty decent games in there consistently like i'm just showing now playstation mm-hmm. plus um you know you're talking about the final fantasy 7 remake uh fall point they did remnant of the edge i know you've been playing that frog control ultimate edition yep. concrete genie which that was theirs man eater to shadow of the tomb raider you know uh just cause for worms rumble and know what i yeah. like that they've been doing is that they've been putting since the playstation came out starting with bug snacks they've been making sure that there was a playstation 5 game in that list which is pretty yeah, awesome game, yes. you know they're yeah. making sure that's either an exclusive or a playstation 5 game which is a great trend to see because you know that they want you know in addition to getting the playstation collection with playstation plus you're also oh. going to get a game at least a month of some sort of playstation 5 feature yeah, yeah so odd world so, odd words coming to ps5 uh that too. So, uh, <laughs> yeah plus, and yeah, frog called yeah, that one yeah, i called that so one. does yeah. um so does uh, Microsoft have they put a Series X game in um, Games of Gold yet? I don't know. I'm not having. Uh oh. They don't have. Well, 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 he said. He said. Have. He said Games of Gold. Hold they on. I gotta play the Sirens. They don't have no, a Series no, X game they though. They sirens. They, they, they only had one, party. which was the Midian. They, they have third party titles. I mean, it's not just. Well, third party, yeah, but not first party. No, third party, yeah. No. Have they put a third party Series? Game in Game Pass? But what's uh, third no. party series X? No. Games of game Gold is, is no. no Game Pass. They put a, yes. They put a, not Games game of Gold. Pass, yes. Games of no, Gold. No. Not, but not game Pass, game yes. Pass. Not Game Pass. Games no. of Gold. Oh, oh no. Gold? I got hit the no. sirens again. He said the so. word again. Games of Gold is dead. It's dead. The only game that they put in there was yeah, Gears 5 it. because they tried to shift everybody by giving them the double dildo in February by <laughs> jubbing, doubling the price of Xbox Live. But and because of that, they thought to throw out the whole Gears Five as there as an apology, um, and <laughs> that didn't work. That was it. And then they made sure that they they brought back the double dildo for this month, where they gave you games that I had to zoom in at a hundred percent to find out what the hell the the, the screen art was because I don't know what the hell these games you were. Know what I, you know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna take a shot every time I hear Phil Ness or Game Pass tonight because. <laughs> Damn, We're not I'm saying like, it. <laughs> we get the I'll probably, probably be drunk by the time it's done. But what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is like, you know, I do think that for Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass is a good idea, but I don't think for a whole as gaming community that it's a great idea. That that whole subscription based gaming model it doesn't work 
for everybody. And I know a lot of people will say, no, it does. It does not. It doesn't work for Nintendo and it doesn't work for PlayStation. And there's a reason that, you know, it can work for Microsoft like the way it does. And, you know, it just doesn't work for other companies like it can work for Microsoft. I think for Microsoft, it's a brilliant ideal. I think for PlayStation, it would be a horrible idea. Uh, it would really hurt and tank that company. I think for Nintendo, it would be a horrible idea. It would hurt and tank that company. They would lose so much more money. I think Microsoft has the ability to do that. So it's a great idea for them. And I think if you are a Xbox owner, you should have Game Pass. I, I think that it, it works They're very well for They're definitely making you go in that yeah. way. Yeah, but I, I honestly don't think it can work for the other two, you know, like that because, um, especially you know, Nintendo. Is it working though? Is it working? Because well, his, for my, I, I, dude, well, for I don't my, know what's working for, anymore. You know dude. what? They're not making money. Here's the thing: Vala. Money and right. The, look at the quad of the titles that are going in there. I mean, come yeah. on. Well, what I what I'll say is it's working in the fact that. It's a place to just kind of put their games, whether they work or not, and you only pay a a, a monthly uh, subscription. So it's kind of like you know, uh, and like I say, I have I just got Game Pass. What uh, I had it before, and then I got it again this year. So I'm gonna really give it a chance because I had it for like a year, and then I just I just didn't find anything compelling enough to keep it. And um, so what I'll say is, is it working? Uh, as far as subscription based gaming for their platform, I think it works, but as a hold for for what the future of gaming is, no, it doesn't work. I don't think it's the future of gaming. I've, I've heard a lot of people, you know, Jaffe and all. It's the future. Of, I don't believe that. I, I just, I don't believe Game Pass is the future of how we do games. I believe that, you know, that's not how we'll, we will see games in the future uh, 10 years from now. I do believe that streaming will eventually be the big thing that takes over, but I still think that's a ways off. And, um, I think that Microsoft's trying to do this whole well. We build a build up, you know, our our software library by buying up this and buying up that. Hey, we can just get anybody to put their games in there. And you know, I, I've always said Game Pass would be as successful as the IPs they can put in there. So I do think it's working for people who own Xboxes, and they're like, we have very uh, few games we want to buy for a full sixty or seventy dollar whatever price. So th- it works for them. You know, I think yeah. for Sony it would work, but Sony would lose so much money. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it would hurt. I think there's certain games. Like, I'm no one thing I was noticing while, while going on. Do you know that they changed the, uh, for some reason, from September to November, they changed the logos of Game Pass Ultimate and yes. Xbox Live Gold? They got rid of the green. Yes. Now it's just like play black and white. Like, it's interesting. Uh, the only one that I think is like, you know, see, September they did the division in Games with Gold, not the Division 2, Division 1. But they're still doing Xbox wow. OG games and 360 games as part of the two games that you're getting. Um, and then last mm-hmm. month was the only month that they did in February oh, Gears Five because of the because of the stuff, um, you know. But anyway, games with gold. I don't want to hit the siren again and blow out people's ears. But we're <laughs> going to uh, go into the the, the nitty gritty of everything. This thing that people just cannot stop talking about. And it is, again, Microsoft Phil. buying studios and Bethesda. The contract signing happened today. Oh, wow. Phil Ness came uh, down. They said, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dollar Bill Phil. And he came down and it's like, huh. money, 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 money. And he came walking down the ramp. Todd Howard was sitting at the table inside the ring. The contract opened. Todd Howard <laughs> He's sitting there, and Phil's like, you. And he came walking down the ramp, and Phil went over to in the ring. He, he cheered to the crowd, and they were like this. They were going to him. They were like this. <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> feel, feel. Feel, feel. And Phil was there, and he's like, Todd Howard, you are going to be my bitch. And then what Phil said to Todd Howard, he walked up to him and he signed the contract and Phil Spencer looked at Todd Howard right in his beady little eyes, combed his hair back a little bit and said this. I've got news for you. You are mine now. You belong to me. (laughs) And Todd Howard (laughs) was like, this is really cool. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I was going crazy with that one. Anyway, but yeah, uh, we're going to be hearing that a lot tonight. <laughs> Phil Spencer's quote is like, I got news for you now. You're mine now. You belong to me. That's what he said to Todd Howard. But anyway, so with that, guys, we're going to go. We're going to the grind table. This is going to be lit. Hit that like button. Share it out. Let's go. Here we go to the grinds table. Get your drinks and your beverages. This is going to be wild. Oh, oh baby. I don't know. I better get take a sip. Ready. Here we go. All right. <laughs> did we survive the, the transition? I think we did. I think I think it's funny how you said he, Todd Howard had the beady little eyes, not Bill Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Howard had the glassy, beady little eyes. <laughs> a little beady glass guy just looking at you. He's like, Phil, and Phil came down there, and he's like, I'm signing this. That's what it felt like, a freaking WWE contract signing. Everybody's, like, watching, like, it got approved. It got approved, like, uh, dude, like, Jesus <laughs> When is it about games anymore? Like, I don't even know. Like, I, I, the thing is, a Sony born insomniac. I could, I could give a. I don't even know what date they signed the contract, and Phil wiped his ass with the contract, and 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 Todd ha and friggin' uh, what's his name? What's the guy over in insomniac when he 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 shook? Uh, uh, I know you're talking about, but I can't think of his Ted name. Price. We just more, we were more worried about the game. I had no anything. clue what Ted Price ate for dinner, and the Ted Price, uh, you know, shook hands with Gordon Jim Ramsay and and Sean Layden and rubbing <laughs> balls. I had no clue what the, when this happened. All I know is that Sony said we bought Insomniac and had a bunch of games. Spider Man's coming, my right. like, holy exactly. shit! This thing we knew. <laughs> We heard Phil's intent in September. Phil's like, I think I'm going to buy those bitches. And everybody goes crazy. Tom Warren <laughs> freaking runs to the bathroom, gets the lotion. Everybody's going crazy. And then it's like, and now oh it's God. like, wait a second, the deal is done. Oh, but wait a second. I, I saw people posting the goddamn legal documents of like, well, I don't know, somebody must have took a picture of a Phil's that. desk. I don't know what the hell's going on. But they basically like got the legal documents. They, they found out what Phil ate for breakfast. They, they, they knew where they were going <laughs> to find them to sign this. I don't know what the... And so today, it got approved in the U.S., but then the U.K. was like, I don't know, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, the U.K. says, we signed and... What are we doing here? And then there's like a rumor now that March 11th is going to be a video package put together. Like, this is like, come on. And, and what do we get to play this month? Anything. Hit the sirens. Uh, from, from them? Anything? Anything? Like, uh, this is just, it's just like uh, 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 the, the minutia the, of the meaningless bullshit. That travels along the news, that Xbox makes news, or like Xbox websites make about this, but the deal is finalized. Herod, like, like, oh my god. And now Phil will tell us what's happening with these games. Yeah, he's going to put a video package and be like, you know, and just be like, um, yeah. Bob's got news for you. You're mine now. You, you, you go belong to, to me. Uh. But my god. Anyway, so that's that's what happened today. The WWE contract signing between Phil Spencer, Todd Howard, or Ed... Fr what the hell's that other guy? Pete, Pete Hines Ketchup? Hines Ketchup? He's there. He was the manager. He's like... he's like uh, What's his name? He's like... um, He was sitting next you, to Tom you, Holland. Like, on, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. You hear me? You, you want to go into like the CFO? Oh, wait. Well, I got the stuff. I got all the stuff up here. We're going to get into that. I'm just talking about the amazing showdown that happened today. Did, did you guys not see, see what I saw all over the internet? They're freaking, they had, they had Todd Howard there. He was in the ring. And he was all ready to sign this contract. It, Phil Spencer It did. was weird. It was weird, know, this wasn't is a it? Whole, this is a weird thing. I've never seen anything like this, you know, from... You know, be happy about uh, whatever platform you know you have and, and what companies they buy, but some of the the hype is not even around the games. It's just more like we got it and you don't. It's childish stuff. It's like, like come on now, are we children or are we gamers? Like it's childish. It's like 
you're not most I know a lot of people who aren't even excited about the games that are coming out. They're just happy at the fact that that the but Microsoft owns this game division now and it, it <laughs> maybe possibly these games won't be anywhere else. I'm like, why? That's so childish. Like as far as I'm concerned, that's the thing, man. I play, the I detail on, of on the signing thing. When Sony bought Insomniac, it. it was like, Yeah, we got him. Okay, cool. Let's go. What are we getting? Oh, Spider Man's only on PlayStation. Okay, cool. Like, and then here, like three or two other games. Like, that was it. it. It was about the games. Yeah. But this is just like ridiculous. It. They got the contracts out on the internet. They're like, it's finalized today. Like, you you would have thought they signed, you know, a freaking uh, relief bill for a freaking, you know, uh, something or something. <laughs> like the way people were treating it. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Check. That's how that's how it felt. It was crazy. Wild. The stimulus, but there's the stimulus bill. <laughs> yeah, basically, it, yo, that's well. basically what's trending. It was like the that's stimulus bill and like Bethesda signs with Microsoft, like it finalizes. Like that was trending. Like Jesus, I know it's one of the biggest deals though. Like it is like a seven point five oh, billion deal dollar deal. It's huge. Now, like, no, it, it is, is a big it is, deal. It is, so it, it, it's not like small sure. pennies. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Phil Spencer spent. He opened up the checkbook for that one. But anyway, but the thing is, is like so. The biggest question. So it's not even the deal. So all the hyperbole right, of the right, deal. Right. It's not even the deal. Right. The thing is that everybody that's wet and everybody's noodle is what Phil is gonna say about all Bethesda games being exclusive, because something that a lot of people have been saying: exclusives matter, right? No more kumbaya. Phil's taking back his marshmallows. He's pissing on the fire now. I thought it was anti-consumer. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Anti-consumer, dude. That's what I was hearing. Dude, I heard about the future. I heard that game should be everywhere. A game should be for everyone and be available anywhere for everybody to enjoy. That's what I heard. That's right. And any any company that locks uh, exclusive behind, right? Any company that locks exclusive behind a platform that that's anti-consumer. That's what I heard. I wonder you know where that I mean? came so, from. So are exclusives are exclusive goods now? Is it exclusive Wait. good things to have now? Uh, are they um are they um talk, are you guys talking about the Bethesda stuff or whatever? Oh yeah, like yeah. But Increase your volume a little bit. People want uh, this in you a little low. Oh, I don't know how to well Uh-oh. I'll turn it up. <laughs> well we'll be quiet. Wait, I won't play any sound clips any of you. Can you can you hear me any better? I hear you better, just a little low. We'll I'll I'll won't we'll play any sound clips. Oh, um, um, well, I mean, you know, uh, they haven't made an announcement, right? About exclusivity, right? Uh, no. Well, they said I mean, on a case by case it, basis. So, so well, th- no, well, but they, they, they talked about it. Though. They talked about it. We'll get into those. I have those, but what do you well, think, look, Link? Didn't Phil say he didn't buy Bethesda to take games away from other people? Mm, we got those. We got those. But what do you we think? Got, we got those too. We got, we, those I got them all. I got, I got everything got, here. What do, what do I think they will do? Well, what do you think about this whole exclusive stuff? Will you want to? Did you say about uh, gatekeeping and 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 this exclusives is, are bad? Um, I don't think exclusivity is bad. I mean, if they bought the company, they got a right to make it exclusive. They choose to. I mean, I don't play those games anyway, so it doesn't really affect me. But um, and most of the people who are talking about wanting it exclusive, as far as Xbox people, don't play those games either. But Thank you. So it really doesn't change. Thank Honestly, you. Honestly, these games are already on their platform, so they're really just taking them off other platforms. They're not getting any more games. So yeah, they're getting the same games that they would have gotten. The same regardless. games they were already paying that they didn't, <laughs> they didn't buy in the first place. So I mean, it really doesn't change anything. But if they're not on PlayStation, oh well, I'm not gonna miss. Yeah, it. Those, those are, but here's my thing and, and and i've said this numerous of times this this is like my stance on this whole microsoft buying bethesda and exclusive games for now i've always said i've said this numerous of times on on planet xbox on twitter on salty's uh, mm-hmm. podcast if microsoft bought bethesda bethesda games going forward should be exclusive to xbox exactly it should be that's yeah, the way it's I supposed agree. to be Right, because not only that, it drives more competitions. It's better for the consumers, particularly the Xbox consumers, right? And then also, you know what I mean. You don't gotta like. It should like I'm all for I'm all for and also a console identity, right? Like when I when I used to play Xbox back in the day, the main games I would play for was usually first person shooters and Western RPGs. Well, what does right. Bethesda makes first person shooters RPGs. and Western RPGs? You know, so, so that kind of fits so, so if it perfectly fits Xbox, 
portfolio. Right. Like it perfectly fits. So yeah. they should have those shits exclusive. But the question is, is Microsoft who pays seven point five billion are gonna say, well, we're gonna take this away from PlayStation, right? And just make it exclusive to Xbox and PC and put it and put it and, and, and just put it everything on Game Pass day one. Like huge games that cost hundred millions of dollars like Elder Scrolls and seven point five billion dollars. Like are they gonna be able to recoup that money back uh by putting them shits on Game Pass? Now like a lot of people will tell you, right? Like a lot of Xbox dudes will tell you was like, well yeah, if they could do that, then the Game Pass subscriptions are just gonna skyrocket and they're just gonna get like a hundred million and stuff like that. Like I but I don't know if they should if they're willing to take that loss. That's that's the that's the whole question. Like are they or or any, or are they not? But Judging by the previous comments, right, from, like, the CFO and stuff like that, which we're going to get into, like, it's looking like it's, yeah, it's going to be, like, more of a case-by-case basis. Well, it's going to be something like a Minecraft deal, which, yeah, they're going to, they're going to make sure that the Xbox, that these Bethesda games play best, first, or better on Xbox. And if you get it on the PlayStation 5, you're going to have to pay $70 for, like, the you know the purposely get version that they do. You well, know what I mean? this is the thing like though. That. Think about it. All right, you know they're gonna be on Xbox, obviously because of Game Pass. You know they're gonna be on PC via Game Pass or Steam or Epic Store or whatever. And you know most majority PC people don't like the Microsoft Store, so they're probably gonna have to still put the games on Steam, still yeah. put them on the Epic Store. What they're gonna do that? They might as well put them on PlayStation because it doesn't make sense to. It, I mean. If they really, how are they going to recoup all this money? These 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 hundreds of millions of dollars that's in in game development for these big AAA games that Bethesda likes to make, and just put them on Xbox and PC. I just don't see how that would work when most of their games sell the, some of their games sell millions and millions and millions of copies on the PlayStation platform. So that's just really just pissing away money that you could have, you know. So I I don't know. Like I said. If it was me and I was Microsoft, I would not put the game on PlayStation. Yep. That's what they should. But, you know, with Microsoft, you just never know. Well, the thing yeah, is, I, is like the whole the thing. Well, I was going to say, like, the, the, the quote that no, I right. have up here was that, you know, this whole exclusives matter thing and the whole exclusive, like, and now it just seems like that has gone out the window because back in July uh, uh, in 2020, Phil was going around going, you know, their exclusives are completely counter to what gaming is about. And he was saying like, gaming is about entertainment and community and diversion and learning new stories and new perspectives. I find it completely counter to what gaming is about to say that part of it, part that is locked to people, the part, ladies and gentlemen, that part of that is to lock people away from being able to experience those games or to force right. someone to buy my specific device on the day that I want them to go buy it in order to partake in and in what gaming is about. Gaming is bigger than any one device. So this goes on and on, and this thing came out, and people are like, well, exclusives matter, Phil. Like, wh- that's why people come to your platform. You're basically saying that that is against gaming, and you want to grow gaming bigger. Well, we see... All the people that prom- that that loved Phil in July and was going around gatekeeping because he's exactly describing what Sony was doing. We're making games for the PlayStation for you to go to that device and play that game. Phil was like, "That's not what gaming is about." Well, now mm-hmm. everything has changed. Now, once they bought Bethesda, and everybody's like, "You," I see people telling Phil, "You better lock those games down." So I guess exclusives do matter because I remember doing videos and turning blue in the goddamn face because I saw red when I saw this because I'm like, where is this guy coming from? Him and his goddamn marshmallows need to go take a hike somewhere in the woods and never come back. The thing is, is like exclusives matter. So that's why I'm glad everybody has come to the realization that exclusives do matter and that's why they want Bethesda games locked on their platform. Okay, so we could stop the kumbaya shit. We could stop saying that Phil is is all about not gatekeeping and putting his games everywhere, and, and mm-hmm. it's done. This is Phil Ness. Stop, this is stop crying about Final Fantasy being the yeah. That's it. And you got that Final shit. Fantasy, and, and I tell that and I tell that to PlayStation guys exactly. Too. If if all of Bethesda games become exclusive, Elder Scrolls, and you like these games, Elder Scrolls, go buy an Xbox. Go buy an Xbox or, or PC. PC. Either or. Yeah. 
Xbox and that, or PC. That's, and, and I that's totally it. agree because that's what I feel yeah. like. If these games are exclusive and they're never coming to PlayStation, it does give me a reason to buy an Xbox yeah. as, a, as a primary PlayStation owner. And I won't be unhappy because I'm like, if it's a game I like, I've always bought exactly. you know, assistance for give games I like. I, I think it's healthy. It's healthy for the industry if you're like, hey, this is the only place you can play this. Now, my personal thing, p- opinion is I do think there's a possibility. Uh, I would say, you know, there's a 50-50 that these may, games may end up on PlayStation because I don't think that Microsoft is going to sit there and say, shoot, they're dominating hardware-wise, and we need to push your software, and yeah, Game Pass numbers, you know, if you sell, does it make a difference, and this is, I guess, my opinion, does it make a big difference if you're like, hey, we got, you know, I don't know, 30, let's just say 30 million Xbox Series Xs and Ss out there in the market, 30, 35 million, and Sony's sitting there, and they got 75 million, and we they're only on this current gen console shit, yeah. And that's yeah, they're in Game Pass, and that's only thirty something five million people that can subscribe to it. Hey, we could put this on PlayStation and make so much more money. So I think that's where it also boils down to it. It's like they're mm-hmm. a company and they're about business. And and the bottom line is, yeah, I would prefer those games to only be there and make me force me to buy a console as a gamer because it's good for me. Because then I'm I have a reason to say, oh, I'm buying this. But if you're if you if you can't get your hardware up, I don't care. I don't care how many freaking Game Pass subscribers you have. You know, if you if you, if you if they do like the last generation did with the X versus or the sec, the Xbox One versus the PlayStation Four, they might as well put those games everywhere. In my opinion, because to me it makes more sense at that point. Because it's like, yeah, we have the possibility of having this many people subscribe to Game Pass, but we can also make an extra seventy bucks per or, or, you know a pop. On, over on PlayStation, and we know this game is sell five, ten million. So you know, I think that it's a double-edged sword. It's kind of like, damn, great that they did that, but is this really going to bring back the consumer to buy the hardware in droves, which they're not doing now? Mm. I don't think it does, and I think that's why it's a double-edged sword for Microsoft. It's great because I, I know a lot of people will say, oh, if Sony did this, they would definitely keep it on their console. Yeah, because Sony's like shit, Sony didn't say the bogus ass shit that Phil said. Right, and, but Sony, but, but we all know Sony needs to do that. It's just like if Nintendo did it, they would need to do this because this is their bread and butter where they make money. Microsoft is a trillion dollar company, and so you got to look at the business aspect of it too. Yeah, they're a trillion dollar company, but if if they're not, if people aren't going out there in droves and purchasing this hardware, it doesn't matter where they put this game at. You know, uh, if it's not making them back money, they, at some point they may say, you know what. We'll put it here for a year, and then a year from now, we'll say, "Hey, it's coming to PlayStation." Yeah, they're trying also. to they're trying to go the the service route. They're trying to right. get like as many people to come to these like, you know, low low cost entry gaming yes. into and these that's a hard market to keep right them there. on. Yeah, to keep yeah, them. It's, yeah, it's, it's bottom barrel shopping. For. It's bottom yeah, barrel shopping. It's people. This, it's the people that yeah. don't want to spend money that you're trying to get money from. Like I, that's why I always thought Most this definitely. approach yeah, to going they, they, to mobile. Yeah. You know, I always have my uh, Phil Spencer. You know, trying to go to the phone. You know, I'm trying, he's trying to, to use the he phone. He wants games on phones and stuff. I felt like you're bottom barrel shopping, dude. Like you're going after people that 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 don't even care about Xbox or Gears or anything like that. So why are you bringing games to them? Like you're really shooting blanks. Like what what is the turnaround like are you going to get a lot of people to play those games on their phone which is not the most optimal place to play that game and to experience that is that a way to to lure them into your console like really just by giving games on devices that people really don't game those type of games on i really don't know what the turnaround is that's why him chasing phones i'm like it's nice but you really should be talking to hardcore gamers and telling them that's their like their um you know their go to their their remote device or something like that rather than just putting it on phones for people to be like well you know you're never gonna buy a console but play this console game on your phone uh and you know hopefully we'll patch in touch screens or something like that you know but the thing is is like the reason why everybody's not sure about what's going on was because of the stuff that phil said and also too you know um this stuff that came out and chris put this one in the chat and this one uh is basically the um the, CE, the, the CEO, CFO, Jam Fans. And the big yeah, quote yeah. is, we don't want to p- just pull Bethesda content from PlayStation and Nintendo. Microsoft isn't concerned with exclusivity as much as it is, is with calling 
a first or best approach. So the main things are, and I'll let you know. Uh, I'll just say, you know, I'll read the quote here of what he what he stated here. And again, everything so far, and I got some video clips too. It's like we're saying that these need to be exclusive. Like this is what drives right. the the platform is the exclusivity. You spent you spent seven point five billion dollars, and I got a point about this too. Um, for this for this company to get all these games. You should make these exclusive to drive people to your platform. That's what you want to grow, right? But everything that they say is not kind of leading to that. They're, and and people are like, well, they're gonna, they have to clear, they have to say something. They've been saying something ever since they talked about buying Bethesda. It's just you don't like what they're saying. I think that's another problem that a lot of people are just like. Fingers and ears going la 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 la. They're gonna tell us on Friday that everything's gonna be exclusive la 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 la. But they're not reading everything since September of what they've been saying. Okay, so this is the quote from the CFO: "We highly encourage cross-platform play simply from this landscape if it's good for the gaming ecosystem. What we'll do in the long run, the long run, not not this this summer, not this holiday." What we'll do in the long run is that we don't have intentions of just pulling all of Bethesda's content out of Sony or Nintendo or otherwise. But we, Mm. yo, he says, what we'll we'll do in the long run is we don't have intentions of just pulling Bethesda content out of Sony or Nintendo or otherwise. So what are they going to, are they going to say, yo, that guy's bullshit? The CFO is bullshit? Nah, but, but continue. Oh, yeah, I'm going to continue but, it. But, yeah, but what, we want, what yeah. we want is what we want that content in the long run to be either first or better or best or pick your differentiated experience on our platforms. We will want Bethesda content to show up as best as on our platforms. That's not a point about being exclusive. So just when you think, oh, first and better and best, oh, that means exclusive. He says no in the next goddamn paragraph. (laughs) That's not a point about being exclusive. That's not a point about where being adjusting timing or content or roadmap. So basically he's saying no to timed exclusivity as well. But if you mm-hmm. think about something like Game Pass, here we go, Ass Pass, here it comes. If it shows up best in Game Pass, that's what we want to see. And we want to drive our Game Pass subscriber base through that Bethesda pipeline. So again, for those in the back, for those in the back, he reiterates this in the third part of the quote. So again, I'm not announcing pulling content from platforms one way or the other, but I suspect you'll continue to see a shift towards a first or better or best approach on our platforms. Hmm. That's the chief financial Dude. officer. Clarification. He literally said, he's literally saying, when we ain't talking about pulling in the long run, he says in the long run, we're not, you know, just gonna straight up pull games away from PlayStation or Nintendo, right? He said in the long run. So we're talking about the future games. We're not talking about just existing games, but he's talking about also the future games, right? And so, and, and like, yes. even right before that, even right before that, right? Um, it says, uh, Microsoft has suggested earlier that it's focused on ensuring that the games are played best on Xbox and that it's exclusivity will decide will be decided on a case by case basis. Well, no. If you don't want to believe the CFO of the company, if you don't want to believe Phil from 2019 or uh, 2020, why don't we get Phil live right here to put his face on the sh- on the grindhouse, poke his head in and tell us with his mouth what this Bethesda thing means. This, this you have. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. We got another video. And this is the thing. We all agree that these games need to be exclusive. I don't know people like, I don't know what podcast somebody said, well, you don't spend $7 billion to make things exclusive. Well, I don't know where that got, that rumor went around. But all I'm saying is, 
They love Phil when he says this stuff, but when he says things that they don't want to hear, people don't listen to him. This sh- We shouldn't even be talking about this right now. This shouldn't even be a topic. This should have been a one-and-done deal. Done. They bought them. They're ours. Bitch, you belong to me now. Where's my thing? Where's my thing? Where, where, where's, uh, where's Arnold? He has to say it again to him. Well, I've got news for you. You're mine now. You belong to me. That's what Phil should have said to Bethesda. You're mine now. You belong to me. And that's it. Okay? But wait, there's more. So this is what Phil had two interviews when they bought Bethesda. Because this is the other thing that I don't get. Well, Phil says that, uh, you know, it's a case-by-case basis, but he can't say anything until the deal's done. However, he's able to say all their games are going to be in Game Pass day one before the the ink is even signed. Before the deal is done. Yeah, so he could say that, but he won't say exclusivity? All right, that makes no sense. Whoever made that up, too. But here we go. He was dodging the question. Well, no, he answers the question. Here it is. That's our goal. So, Phil, on that note, then, uh, how will this affect the launch of future games? I know that ZeniMax was developing one for PS5 exclusively. Does that stay intact, or is that going to change after this deal? Yeah, the commitments we've already made with the gamers out there on the uh, games that people know about, we will continue with those commitments. The thing this is really about is a huge investment in our Xbox community. They know that the great games coming from ZeniMax and all of those studios, we're now at over 23 studios inside of uh, Xbox, those games will be able to come to the Xbox community, they'll come to Game Pass day and date, and people will have just an amazing collection of great games to continue to play on Xbox. So he confirmed they're coming day and date, and he just said this means that the Xbox community knows that these games are coming to them. Maybe alluding to maybe Google was going to buy Bethesda. Maybe Sony was going to buy a whole bunch of games exclusively like they were doing with Deathloop and stuff like that. So maybe him buying them was to make sure that those games came to Xbox because there was some uncertainty. Maybe Google Google or Amazon Amazon were going to buy Bethesda, and Phil's like, yo, we got to make sure you come to our platform. Because... If they were just going to be the Bethesda of the Bethesda, it doesn't make sense for him to be like that they're coming to our platform because they were always going to go to your platform. So maybe there was something looming out there. So maybe that's why he bought yeah, it. Yeah, because they're more, they're more worried about Amazon and Google. Amazon and of Google. Of course. Of than, they, than they are. Like, with like, like, but at this point, like Xbox is really is, – is they know they can't like, really win against PlayStation as far as like the traditional way. So they're trying to service route or whatever, and they're going to want to make sure that these other companies who are more of a threat as far as, like, that route, which would be Google and Amazon, don't pick, like, companies, like, that were sure. up to sell, like Bethesda and shit like that. So it's like, I don't know, man. It's like, but we're yeah, not... we don't know. Like, like before, I would have been like, nah, Xbox, they're going to keep their shit exclusive, but this is obviously a different Microsoft. Yeah, they're, but, they're, Chris, we got to, we... in... one yeah. interview is not enough. We got another interview. Phil came on a second time. Yeah. And they asked him the question directly. That girl asked a little bit of the question. This one asked them directly. Now, the one thing that I wanted to point out in that last interview was that Phil said what this is really about is letting the Xbox community know that these games are coming to them and that these games will be day one in Game Pass. He didn't say that these games are only coming to your platform. He didn't say only, only, only. The other guy said better, best, first, like, and that's not about exclusivity. He, they're talking about what? Series X, PC. The games are going to play the best because they got the best console, okay, or the best, uh, most powerful console. So they'll be, be the best at Game Pass, you know, one of those things. But wait, Phil got asked the question directly again. What did he have to say about this one? Community. So once inside Xbox, ultimately will Bethesda then start making games for only Xbox and PCs only and not PlayStation? Clearly our commitment yes. with no. this move is that Xbox and PC and people playing on xCloud and Game Pass will get ZeniMax's games. So the collection of Bethesda Studios will be coming to Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. And that's just a huge commitment from us. In terms of other platforms, I think we'll make a decision on a case-by-case basis. But this is really a move to just show the strong commitment to the Xbox community that great games will be coming. Uh. So that's where they got the case by case basis from, um, and again, yeah, and it's like, a no, case like, by case. Like, real, real, real quick, 
yeah. Uh, back to what you're saying, like it, it, it says, uh, you see us uh, shift towards a first or better or best approach on our platforms. First meaning like it comes first on Xbox, right? That means it comes first there, then it goes to other platforms later. Uh, better, which means you know it runs better on Xbox or best approach, which I take that as the people who don't like. You know, uh, spending money to pl- uh, buy games or whatever, like full price or whatever, they get Game Pass. That'll be the best approach for those people, who are mainly on Xbox. You know what I mean? Or for other gamers or whatever. So, it, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's, th- that's it's clear the, as day that it's a case by case basis. Yeah, it's that a case by case basis. That, that there's gonna be no like, it's yeah, there's gonna be. Of course, there's gonna be Bethesda exclusives. Like I, I see Doom being like these other games that are not like maybe Doom. Maybe. Well, they gotta like, get Fallout. over the first PlayStation exclusives. Yeah. <laughs> That's the craziest part about it is that they gotta yeah, get over the crazy. two, but the the exclusives that are coming out this yeah. year, Ghostwire and Deathloop. And Deathloop, like yeah. those are two PlayStation exclusives. There's no if ands or buts about it. You know, mm-hmm. and that's and, and that's a thing. Like it's definitive, and them being like this causes the Xbox community to go in disarray and it's confusions. And people are sitting there ready to buy a console or wanting to say, I'm going to game on Xbox on PC. Like, well, PC, you know it's going there. But, like, they're like, well, wait a second. Do I have to invest in your console to get these games? Just be clear about it. Like, the girl, the lady asked the question, plain as day. So is Bethesda never going to make games for the PlayStation 5? And he goes, well, and then he talks about it all coming across Game Pass and PC and, and Xbox. And then he goes, and the other thing is a case-by-case basis. The thing is, is, like, he should have just said yes. Like, well, no. They, they will not. Well, will they be making games for PlayStation? You'll be like, whatever they have and already made, yes. But beyond that, that will be on the Xbox platforms. That's it. Now, people think that after those interviews of what he said, he's just going to come on to, like, a Major Nelson show on Friday and just be like, guys... I just, it was all ruse. It was all Phil Ness. You know, they told me to say the lies. You know, it was all ruse. And Phil Spencer yeah. just going to be just joking around and he's just going to be like, I lied. <laughs> it's all exclusive. We're taking everything away from Sony. The CFO, it's a ruse. He was in on it all the time. There he is. The clown. There he comes. Honk, honk, honk. Here he comes. The clown. The CFO was on. He was in on it. We're all in on it. It was a ruse. We got you. Just like we got yeah. you with the Xbox Live double increase. We we fooled you. You know, we got you. Here it is. Oh, Satya, you were in on it too, you son of a bitch. Get over here. Get over. You were in on it too. Get the fuck over here, Satya. You were in. Major, the fuck you knew too. Get over here, Major. Get over here. You knew too. This was all a ruse. And they were going to come together on the show and hug. Greenberg. You motherfucker, you you were fucking in on it too. You brought up this idea. Greenberg, get over here. Come on, it was a ruse. Is that what's going to happen on March 11th? Is that what's going to happen, guys? Are you stunned? Is that what's going to happen? It was all a ruse. I don't know. All this stuff was all bullshit. And meanwhile, now that the no, side I already, contract... I already, I already said what I think they're going to do. They're just going to, like <laughs> what you said, like they talk about how, you know, oh, it's great to be a part of Xbox or whatever, but they're going to dance around whether their games are just going to be only on Xbox or not. They're going to dance around that and they're going to dodge that. They're not going to they're not gonna say anything about that. You know? Is it, yeah, it's so. going to be a tap dance. Just like you said, a case-by-case basis. And the, th- the thing is, is like, this is what drives me crazy about Xbox. I'm like, stop with the wishy-washy shit. When it comes to the games, they are so just like La La Land, dude. They're just like, oh, like, yeah, we thought she half Halo Infinite looked good. We're sorry. Oh, we thought we we're gonna show gameplay. We're sorry. Oh, we thought about Xbox Game Pass, the thing that or oh, Xbox Live that you're gonna play. Oh, was so, like they're just so clueless. But meanwhile, like when it comes to X Cloud and all the other hell shit, Phil like put like you know he drops the gauntlet down. He's like, yes, you'll see Game Pass on TVs next year, guaranteed. But he won't give you a Halo f- Infinite release date. It's just they, they, they flutter where it matters the most for the gamer. That's why I think what Frog says all the time, there's too much. Now there's too much Microsoft and Xbox. They've corrupted this shit. They've turned it into a goddamn Microsoft shit show. And Xbox is a shell of its former self. 
of what it was. And this is the thing that frustrates me the most. When it's about the games, the things that affect us directly, it's this wishy-washy bullshit. Is the game ready? Is it a service game? What does it look like? What is the game about? Is it Game Pass? Is it a subscription game? Is it, you know, What's up with day one guns? What, like, Why is it always wishy-washy with everything relative to what we're going to experience? But when it comes to all that other shit, they're guaranteeing stuff. I, 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 he was talking xCloud and showing Halo looking like a, a, a bare-ass Craig. But xCloud is the future. The, the thing is, is their messaging is just entirely just retarded. Like, they just they drive me crazy with their shit. They're, they're just so disconnected with everything. And now, the rumors, the speculation, they're the paper champs. Both in power, and they're both in the paper champs now where they got 23 studios. Frogs, uh, Link, Chris, do you, do, so since they made the purchases in 2018, how much has those studios produced? Not much. Not and, 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 I, and I will honestly say... What are the games? Been, Can we list them? I think they've been disconnected. I, I think they've been nothing. disconnected. <laughs> no, what I are the games? Been... Since 2018, what games have they put from the... What has been their, their Microsoft generation from the, from those... 20, 2018, okay? We're in 2021. Uh, well, you had a uh, bleeding edge and well, okay, bleeding edge came and went. Yeah, bleeding ass is came bleeding and ass went. is done. Uh, um, grounded is is basically a, a what's name? Grounded yeah. is a service. Yeah. It's in preview. It's actually still in preview. They it's added their preview game. Yes, they added bees and mosquitoes, and they're still waiting for you to tell them what the story know, should be. Like, my That's... my thing my thing with my thing with Xbox. I think they've been disconnected since the launch of the Xbox One X. And I think that they really should have. And, and this is my personal opinion. I think with this new generation, with the PS5 and X, I think they really should have positioned yourself to pull far away from the Xbox One X. And they did not do that. Where Sony didn't need to really pull far away from the PS4. But the PS5 is a totally different element than the PlayStation 4. You can clearly look at it and tell. Whereas yeah. when you look at the Xbox Series X, you're like, oh, I'm still in the Xbox One generation. I still feel Upgrade like I'm in the One Xbox X. One. Yeah. Yeah, Upgrade that's what it feels X. like. And, and, yeah. and the, okay, the console looks different. Cool. But guess what? Still same, same user interface. The controller looks the same. Like, one thing I will give, you know, Sony credit is I would say from the PS2 to PS3, they took a big jump and they learned – tragically oh crap this does not work we really need to go back to the drawing board and ps4 came out took a whole different approach ps5 came out a whole different approach a lot of people say oh it looks the same but it's very drastically different it very much is whereas i think then i don't have a series x so maybe i'm just a guy who's talking shit on his ass but what i think is when i do see the series x and see what it can do i think it's a great machine but when i look at where it's coming from, from the Xbox One to this, I'm like, anybody coming from the Xbox One, the original, uh, or even like the X, it's, you know, you don't have to relearn too much stuff. It's basically the same thing. Whereas when you come from the PS4 to the PS5, you have to retool your brain to work on the PS5 because it's a whole different machine. It's definitely different. And I think that they didn't learn from <laughs> this last generation that just passed, like, you got your asses so, pummeled, uh, it, and it you didn't learn from your last generation, and you saw how Sony with the PS3, they learned. They were like, oh, man, we're getting destroyed. Even though we're, we're neck and neck going back and forth, that 360 was destroying that PS3 in a lot of ways. And Sony learned, and Microsoft was like, shit, we got the bigger Johnson than you. We're going to the next generation mm -hmm. dominating. It didn't happen. You figured it was said, back to the drum board. They come out, and they show the console totally just different we never we never seen any console like this right i give them props for that then they show the controller and you're like oh it's the same thing with an extra button basically in a sense right and then they show you this user interface you're like it's the same exact user interface everything that people complained about the user interface being clunky and a lot of advertising it's hard to find crap yeah it's gotten better but you guys really like like did you not learn look at your 360 generation where you kept updating the user board and it got better and better and better and it's like you guys said we're just going to recreate you know not invent the wheel let's recreate the xbox one they thought they could pull i'm gonna tell you what microsoft thought they could do 
with the X, with the Series X, they thought they could pull a switch and, and you know, a uh, freaking Wii U thing. Well, uh-huh. we saw what the Wii U did, and it did bad. And then Switch came out and it was success. We could do the same thing. But they, but Frog, never... this goes to the point that they were good with the it. hardware, dude. They were they were on yeah, point with their hardware. Great. Like, but then when it came to the software, they had nothing at launch, and Halo looked a no, mess. No and... software. Yeah, I kind of feel this like is, that goes to my point. Nothing. When you look at the nothing. Series X, it's not it's not the hardware. It's the problem. No, like the they, hardware's fine. The new ideals they have yeah, yeah. is like it's the they just don't have the new ideals. They're like, uh, we're just going to stick with the same thing. You know, because it works. And like, wait, no, last generation, you got pummeled. Like, you sold, basically, Sony was selling for every three PS freaking fours out there. There was one Xbox guy in the store buying an Xbox, basically. When you look at the sales numbers, and you're like, people can say sales numbers don't matter, but it, it does, you know, because it's kind of the perception of things. People, re- regardless of well, what anybody devs, wants to think, it gives perception, devs perception every- too. The developers' yeah. perception of where they might want to put their game if they see a exactly. larger install base. If the install base, and this is that's what happened with the with the last generation, and it happened with the 360 generation. It was like the install base. Well, last generation was more evident. Was that the install base was so different that developers actually pivoted and be like, well, we're going to put it on the larger install base. Remember, Chris Lee B said it. Yep. Blade yep. in his day. He's like, well, I only got one per. I got to put it on the larger install base. You know, and that's where I got to go. Like, that's how devs think. So, like, when you see sales, yeah, the sales might not matter, but it definitely matters for Mindshare as to where, like, what's the hotness. Oh, oh yes. You know? And one thing it I does. wanted to point out, too, is that, you know, there's this thing. So, this got... Jeff Grubb from uh, Games Beat, you know, the same guy that said Xbox Live was going to be free um, and last year and started that ruse. Uh, he says now that now that the regulators approved the, the, the acquisition of ZeniMax, and you know, I just want to reiterate my point to Froggy in the chat, mm-hmm. was he said that um, Froggy says that um, he says they couldn't answer things straight until the regulators approved the deal. So I just showed two interviews where Phil said all their games are coming to Game Pass day one. He had no regular approval then in September. So, you know, that's that sounds more ownership than being like they're going to be also, exclusive. And also, <laughs> like, this, the, also the, C, the CFO in November is saying that, oh, yeah. well, we're, we're, there's we're no regulators here. Off and stuff like that. Like, he was already telling them how, about, the, about the play first, wow. best, and better. We're not going to take the games off and stuff like that or anything like that. And, and that was, you know, what I this mean? was before was the approved. regulators. So, like, I, yeah. I, again, that's why I don't know where that thing came from, where the, the WWE contract signs and then Phil says they're exclusive, this is all a ruse. You know what? That's why I said, like, the wishy washiness. It should be exclusive. This should never happen. The CFO shouldn't have said any of this bullshit. He should have said, they yeah. are exclusive, end quote. That's it. And, and, yeah, Go buy an Xbox this holiday. Bottom, bottom, bottom line, yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts. That is what it is. That's what he should have said. If you want, if you want to play... When- yeah, if you want to play these games, like, go buy an Xbox. Buy an Xbox yeah, this holiday. They will, Bethesda games like, are coming. There you go. It's Done. Just like, it's just like with Marvel, like with Marvel and PlayStation, like it, w- w- like an insomniac would say about Spider Man. Like, it's, yeah, like, you know, never coming. Come, come they... to Xbox. Like, no, nope. this is a PlayStation exclusive. They say it straight up. No, this is a PlayStation game. It's a PlayStation exclusive. Like, they just say straight up. So nobody expects yeah. uh, it's going to come to Xbox or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what what he says here in uh in his games beat, this thing says down there supposedly and here we go. There's Microsoft is gonna answer so he says regulators if this, but what does that mean for companies involved but for fans of games like Fallout and Elder Scrolls? Well Microsoft has start answering those questions with a video presentation on Thursday, March eleventh, according to sources familiar with the plans. Microsoft is unlikely to get into specifics about Bethesda's upcoming projects, which means like what is that good for gamers then? Who gives a shit? Details right. about the previously announced sci-fi role-playing Starfield will likely come this summer at E3. Wait to E3. So Xbox and Bethesda won't talk about that now. Instead, they'll explain what the deal means for Xbox Game Pass subscribers. What the fuck? In particular, a number of Bethesda games should make a leap to Game Pass mm. soon. Bethesda will also use this time to reiterate that any future or contractually eligible games from under the ZeniMax umbrella will hit Game Pass at launch. The thing that Phil's been saying since September. So any of their games will be in Game Pass at launch. That's what this deal is about. Not exclusivity. That's what the CFO said. No, Xbox, it's all about Game Pass. This is exactly. It's all about Game Pass. And this goes into my yeah. last point that I want to make about the whole thing. And I want to hear what you guys think. I got to stop taking shots. I'm going to get drunk. Oh, shit. So, oh, man. Sorry. I keep Game saying Game Pass. Pass. Like Damn how many it. times? Frog. <laughs> Bro, it's over, man. Holy it's over. shit. 
Look, I took I took like five shots. I was like, nope. You know, know what's funny for August? That the thing is, is that there's more. This is and this is what grinds my gears. Right here it is. It's more <laughs> about the goddamn signature and signing than about what the fuck these games are gonna be. What Thank is Starfield? What, what's what is what's Indiana the, yes, Jones? Totally... What is Elder Scrolls gonna be? It's not even about Thank Bethesda you. makes great games. I can't wait to play their games on Xbox. It's more about do we have exclusivity or don't we? Exclusivity or don't we? But meanwhile, it's not even like you sons of bitches are playing a bunch of games. You've been waiting for games from the other studios they bought in 2018. Yep. Plus, one came and went bleeding ass is bleeding out. It's done. It's yeah. done. And you all you care yeah. about is the purchase rather than the content. This is what I don't understand about the community. Why are you concerned about the purchase and the signed deal? Did he use a black pen? Did he use a blue pen? What was it? Was it red? Was it green for Xbox? Did he sign in blood? Well, it, Who gives well, a like shit? What was, like what we were saying earlier, as far as Bethesda games going to Xbox, that's something that 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 doesn't really change much because Bethesda games were all, all, already coming to Xbox. And shout out to King Thrash he, the other day. He was going through a lot of, you know, <laughs> uh, Xbox uh, gamers uh, profiles in this community. And you come to find out that, you know, some of these people haven't even played one damn Bethesda game. Yes, exactly. Yeah. C2R. Where are the games, Microsoft? Yeah. Like, who gives a shit about the deal signing? Like, who cares? Who cares? It's about yep. what these games are and that they should be exclusive. That's it. You you, you want to hear something funny? And, and, and I tell you, like, and like I'm I can say I'm I, I pretty much am a Bethesda fan. Like when uh, Skyrim came out, yeah, me too. I I purchased it for you know the PS3 back in the hell day. yeah Skyrim. Um, I put Fallout Four. Uh, yeah Skyrim, Great. and and then I and then what did I do when it came, when it was coming to PS? You know. Uh, and they said, oh, remastered on PS4. I bought it again. I purchased it again. Um, I can't tell you how many times I purchased Skyrim. I purchased Skyrim. I had it on, uh, it's same with Oblivion. You know, I had Oblivion on my Xbox 360. I bought the PS3 version. And my whole thing is like Fallout. Fallout's another game. Like, I think I own Fallout on every, every console. Oh, my God. You know, I own the I VR, Fallout. So my whole thing is like, yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of their games. Not all of them. But you know, like their main franchise, like I'm a huge fan of the Fallout, the Elder Scrolls franchises, uh, you know, some of the other games that they've made, I like them. But, but uh, what I'll say is, like, I really wish that, you know, and I agree with you, I really wish they were more transparent. Say, hey, these games are only this is the only place you can play them. Would it be nice to because, show the games when they announce that too? Yeah, this this like, is the yeah. only place you can play Starfield. This is the only place you can play the new Elder Scrolls. It would Scrolls. be nice, and I think, and I think that you know, it's a wait and see game, like. Okay, is this going to really help us or not? If it doesn't help us, we can put it on PlayStation 5. If it does help us, you know, uh, then we can say, screw it. It's, it's only here. I think it's a wait-and-see game for them. Well, we don't yeah, even know what like the hell game, Starfield like, is, me, dude. Like, I started, I, yeah, that's, like, people way, like, way overhyping Starfield. Like, it's, what it's, is it? It's, it's, huge thing. it's a sci-fi like, like, fallout, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. I don't know. I, we don't fucking know. We don't I don't know. know. That it's set in space. I mean, we assume that it's going to be... Like the Outer Worlds, right? Like a Bethesda, but the Bethesda version. <laughs> Jamal, like, wait a second. Like, Jamal says in the chat, he says he's still waiting for the Cuphead new DLC. Wasn't that announced like three years ago at E3? Four years ago? I don't know, but like, listen, I've been, Damn. Like, I've played, I've played more Bethesda games yeah. than a lot of these people, like, well, uh, who are yeah. like now all of a sudden hyped for Bethesda. Like, I started back with fucking um, Morrowind on the Xbox. Like, that was my first... Hell game. yes. Oh, yeah. Hell Morrowind yeah, on the OG Xbox. Xbox. Man, Morrowind, you know yeah, how I played, bad I wanted to play remake. Oh, I remember that. Yes. Yeah, I know. I played Morrowind oh my on God. Xbox. I played um, Oblivion, wow. Oblivion on the 360. I played Fallout 3 on the 360. I played Skyrim on the 360. I played Wolfenstein. You know what I mean? On the PS4. I played The Evil Within. Damn, you brought back like, memories. You said uh, yeah, freaking like, Morrowind. Damn. So I played like I, you know, I bought Fallout Four, and I, I, I regret that shit because that game was trash. But Fallout Three was amazing. So I played a lot of Bethesda games. But here's the thing: it's like I'm not worried or tripping about Bethesda games not coming to PlayStation because at Me the neither. end of the day, at the end of the day, if I really want to play the Elder Scrolls Six or Fallout, I just Yes, the and that's the thing. Like you're exactly. right. Like that's if it. if Starfield comes Thank out you. and it's the most incredible looking game, and you got to get an Xbox to get it, then 
if you really want the game, then that's, that's where you're going to go. Like, that's not an issue. For it's me. not an issue. That's it not shouldn't an be an issue any, for anybody. Yeah. That's why I mean, I, this whole thing is like it's bonkers I, because it should just be real crystal clear what Microsoft's intentions are. And that's I it. Have the console, yeah. I have it. If I want to play this crap, I'll play it. I'm not interested in those games. I bought them, but I never finished them. So I just, just I didn't even buy Fallout Four. I just gave up on their game. So like I'm, I'm not, they don't interest me at all. Link, like, wouldn't yeah. it be interesting to be like, hey, it would be great to have a show to show what Starfield is now that Microsoft owns them. Like, here's the new gameplay of Starfield, it, like you know, on Xbox. Instead, people just want. Phil to come out and be like it's exclusive everything and like that then they will be satisfied without seeing the games or anything like that. This is the craziness that goes on about this exclusivity because if you recall, exclusivity was was the anti consumer. It was the end of the world. So the fact that the same personnel who promoted their games everywhere missing out on big money and whenever Microsoft Sony puts one of their old ass games on a PC, everybody's like, yep, they're following Microsoft. Get that money that those people are now holding on so hard for exclusivity. Why? If it's exclusive, it's going to be awesome. And if it's not exclusive, it sucks. Like, I raise people to saying, like, hey, if these games are not exclusive, then this deal is a waste. I'm like, what? For you? <laughs> like, like, for you? Like, the thing is, is, like, this is for Game Pass, all right? And this is the point that I wanted to make. I want to get you guys' thing on this, right? People go... You don't pay seven point five billion for a company to make something exclusive, like right? you make it exclusive because you pay. Se- you don't pay seven point point five billions to make that game on your competitor on your PlayStation, right? The thing is, is I was thinking about this thing, and I said, you know, I remember when they rumored or like was supposedly remember they paid supposedly nineteen million dollars was went to Capcom. And people, like, that was to get Devil May Cry 5, like, in Game Pass, like, three months later. Like, they found, like, that's where they thought that's where the money was for this $19 million for a one-off IP royalty payment. And then a month later, it showed up, Devil May Cry 5 showed up in Game Pass. And that was, like, three months after it released. And everybody's like, whoa, Game Pass is getting some big games, you know? The thing is, is, like, if it was true or not, Microsoft, you're right. They didn't have to spend... $7.5 billion to make any Bethesda game exclusive. You think Sev- Sony paid billions of dollars to get uh, Deathloop, to get Tokyo Wire, a year exclusivity? You think Sony paid billions for that? No. So you're right. Why would Microsoft pay $7.5 billion to own all of Bethesda? Jez, they didn't even pay a billion dollars for Insomniac. Exactly. They already three so, games exactly. For them. Right, exactly. So that there's two <laughs> points. Exactly. And there's two points to this thing. You don't pay $7.5 billion to make games just exclusive. You pay $7.5 billion for more than that. They're paying that amount of money. They don't want to just get exclusive games and satisfy the Xbox gamers, which that's what they want. They just want exclusive games because exclusives matter now. No more Kumbaya. That was all ruse. Exclusives matter now. And we're, we're, I'm glad we crossed that bridge. Because whenever I see anybody say Kumbaya now, I mean, they're going to get a grind in my gears, kick in the face. That's what they're going to say. Well, kumbaya and marshmallows. Now, exclusives matter. Because I remember, I see all this stuff now. We're, we're good with that now. We moved on. The thing is, is that you don't pay $7.5 billion and say, we own you. Just to say, we want your games exclusive. No, 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 no. You that's that's definitely less than seven point five billion dollars. I thought that would be set less than seven point five billion dollars to get to just say Starfield exclusive. I bet you could said, "Hey, Todd, here's a billion dollars. Starfield's coming to Game Pass exclusively. I just want it on my platform. Here's a billion. There's more to it than that. Why you pay seven point five billion dollars to own them? Because guess what? You want to control the distribution of the game, where it's going to release. Game Pass. Mm-hmm. You want to control what the game might be formatted as such. Like, hey, you know what? Day One Guns, we got to put this in Game Pass. You know what? Maybe maybe we can't put a, a 30-hour game Day One. Split it up into episodes. Do s- Maybe they want to influence game development in that sense. Not tell you what to make, but tell you what you should be targeting, anticipating this thing going into a service, which is my biggest fear of all. And we've seen this. 
You've seen somebody. You don't own a studio to tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, Halo multiplayer, which has been a hit for all these years, yeah, let's make it free to play. You don't do that when you have exclusivity. You do that when you own somebody. When you own somebody, you could say, Halo, free to play multiplayer, open world service game, go, bitch. That's what happens when you own 343. Now when you own Todd and his his beady little eyes, now you tell him, I want this game to be like this, Todd. Get to work, Todd. You own him now. That's different than saying, Todd, we would like your game to come to our platform. Here's a billion dollars. That's why. That's going to be a crazy dynamic duo. When you own Todd, dude. Pinocchios. Look at Rod. Rod Ferguson left. Maybe they told him, they tapped him on the shoulder and said, you know what, Gear 6? Eh. It's not going to be, it's free to play multiplayer we want. And Todd and Rod Ferguson was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm out of here. <laughs> Maybe that's why he left. Maybe Drew Murray got the Bill Murray got a tap on the shoulder going, hey, you know, perfect doc. I'm glad you announced it. You Yo, know, Rob Ferguson uh, took his cigarettes and left. Yeah, he yeah, said, yeah. fuck you. I got give me that's that a, pack of cigarettes. Okay, but the thing is, is like cigarettes and gears of war. <laughs> it, and that's no the point that I'm trying to make is that you don't need to buy somebody to get games. Microsoft Maybe. didn't buy Epic Studios to get four gears of wars in the 360 right. era. Exactly. I, I mean it's like why they're more concerned about acquisition than games at this point. So, I mean, no, you don't. Sony doesn't have to buy up every studio to get games. See all the exclusive deals. Exactly. Time, uh, oh, touch, fantasy. Uh, temp- I mean, they get what Final Fantasy Seven, Street Fighter Five. I mean, yeah. It goes on and on. They buy and Capcom on. for Street Fighter Five. The Capcom owns oh. by Sony now. Did they buy Square for Final Fantasy 16 no. exclusivity? No. no. Did they did they buy I mean, uh, Tecmo for Neo 1 and 2? No. Nope. Nope. So did I they mean, buy Ox making... System Works for Guilty Gear? Nope. Did they buy Square Enix or Project Athea? Did they buy the Bug Snacks no. developer? Oh, well, well, companies, did they buy, like, did they buy companies like uh, Arc uh, Arc System for, Works uh, or other or other companies like that. They usually just put their games like only on PlayStation and PC because they know Xbox uh, gonna buy gamers well, are gonna buy that. Gonna buy it. So that ain't even. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> just saying like <laughs> this whole yeah. buy. But you want to know what though, Chris? Microsoft is kind of buying those developers. Like they're I'm, buying that size, which is interesting. Like they're buying not, a smaller studio, like uh, Compulsion, like uh, like uh, State of Decay devs and stuff like that. Like they're buying yeah. Compulsion Studios. I'm just not interested in all these these publishers being put under one roof yeah, because then they're going to try to force you into game pass in order to play these games. And I mean, I know what Microsoft's trying to do, but I'm not really cool with it. You know, I don't, but I got you know, worried when they, yeah, when they're like, we might buy more. I'm like, Oh shit. I really hope they don't just start buying up right. big publishers just to put them on because you got to think about it. Mm-hmm. They said today in the, on the deal, 2000 employees, they just got, with this, they got two thousand. Exactly, Benji. Did they buy Kenna Studio? No. Like the the thing is, is like it's the mentality of why. Before I get into the other thing, like why is it now Microsoft buying companies? Not to say that they shouldn't, but the fact is, is the the them buying companies is now the only way that Xbox gets games in a lot of people's minds. When they should be just saying, "Hey, Phil." Why, why can't you be bringing games to my platform? Why am I sitting here waiting without a Series X launch game? Why am I sitting here after Medium going like, well, what's next? And I'm subscribing to your dumbass Game Pass, and I have to ask what's next, and you're sitting here and telling me I got to wait for first party while they build. Like, why is that the only way that you are bringing content to your platform? There are so many other avenues to bring games to your platform, if that was really the important thing, if they really heard the Xbox fan group, the community, and just said, we want great games, Phil, then he would get out there and find the great games to bring to the platform. No fuss, no $7.5 billion. They did it before. That's what drives me crazy. They did this before. Who found, who found Gears? Like, who found Gears and said, I want that on Xbox? Where's that person now? 
You know? It, or it, set out, or what, set out one what, uh, what, Mass Effect, what, you know. What, yeah, Mass Effect 1, Lost Bio, Odyssey, Bio Lost Shock, Planet. Bioshock, yeah, time exclusive. You I mean, the 360 mean, like, and the original Xbox, they didn't hardly own any studios, no. but yet they got a ton of exclusive games. Exactly. Got, I mean, they, exactly. You know what I mean? Dead or Alive. Yeah. They got a lot. They made nice deals. Dead or Alive, yep. But the thing about it is they aren't interested in making those type of deals anymore because they don't own that content so if they can own the content and put in game pass they're going to try to force you into it that's what i you said by I mean? owning that's why 7.5 billion you don't pay 7.5 billion just to make games not on playstation you pay 7.5 billion to make sure that those games are built the way that you want for the services that you are providing that's why you you own them now so now you control the distribution of that game and game pass is one of them and you know what this might be a pivot move because maybe and he always speaks about the flywheel the fact that if they keep putting content into game pass then eventually third-party devs might just say oh we're gonna do it too and now it, it kind of goes on its own spinning cycle and now people are just putting content in that right well everybody who says oh there's a rumor same thing grub again was like Cyberpunk might be in Game Pass day one. Probably should have been. But, like, Game Pass in day one, and basically they're like, oh, hell no, this is a triple A. This game is not going to Game Pass. Like, everybody's quick to say no because they know that Game Pass probably doesn't equal a whole bunch of sales. You know, because now people might, if they're wishy-washy about your game, they're just going to sub and do it when they could have paid $60, $70 for the game. They're just going to sub and play, and you might lose out on that initial push. And think about, like, mm-hmm. oh, that's not important. Yeah. Why is that not important? It, Pre-orders are important, right? And also right? that pool, that money, that money pool that Game Pass has generated, that also has to be split between all of these other third-party developers as well, too. And how does your game shine in a service that has about 150 games in it, and you're trying to, to sign up for it? Like, that's the other thing. And the other point that I wanted to bring to you guys' opinion, too, like, about just buying studios, the thing is, is that if Microsoft wants this $7.5 billion Bethesda deal to generate increased Game Pass subscribers, the only way that I see that happening directly is by making those games exclusively in Game Pass, not selling them outside of Game Pass or putting them on other platforms. You just put that shit as a Game Pass subscription exclusive. That's the only way I'd see that really being successful because I was thinking about it. If you take... The game, say Starfield looks incredible and it's awesome, right? The people that want that game are just going to buy it. Microsoft has to convince those people, don't buy, subscribe. Don't buy, subscribe. But I want this game. I don't care about anything else in Game Pass. How they convince that person to get into Game Pass. So if they just put this, say, Starfield on Xbox, on PC, screw PlayStation. They don't put it on PlayStation. Microsoft wants Game Pass subscribers. Well, how do you convince those people who are on day one most likely going to buy that game to instead subscribe to that game? Mm-hmm. That's a battle that they got to figure out. What do you True. think? Like, do you think like like? And I could say that the the point I want to make is that the reason why I say like the people on day one are going to buy it is because pre orders exist. You, you people are paying for a game before they even can play it. That's how excited they are to give their money to a game that they want to play. So you think they're not going to do that and say, you know what, I'm just going to subscribe when they know they're going to probably put 20, 30 hours in? Like, Chris, would you? if I said, yes, you're going to spend $70 for it or I want you to pay $15 a month for it? I was going to say, I totally agree with you. Like, you got to, if they really want to pull that Netflix model, you can't sell the game. The game just needs yeah. to just be there because Stranger Things is only on Netflix. You can't buy it anywhere else or see it anywhere else but Netflix. So, you know, you put it in that service and you say, hey, Starfield is only coming to Game Pass. We're not producing this game any other way other than Game Pass. It's the only way. I think the only reason they'll do that because they do see themselves losing money. And then on the flip side, I think if they lose money, once again, it goes back to like, oh, shoot, like now I need we need to put this in other places. So I I agree with you. It does need to be like that to convince people to say, OK, we need the Game Pass model. But then what happens, you know, if they uh, if they have it and then they're like, I'm sorry, I'm my I hear too close to the, oh, yeah, that was, I wanna, that was, I'm wanna, sorry. Yeah, but that's what I kind of feel about it. I wanted to answer Jeff's question. What you said, uh, 
if, if I had a choice between just subscribing to Game Pass for fifteen dollars or paying seventy dollars for for which game, Elder Scrolls? Uh, you know, yes, like you just finished. Yes, that's a huge game, right? E seven, E seven. Like if they oh, said, East, hey, that's East going East into nine. Game Pass, E nine. If that's going into Game Pass, do, and you really want to play E nine, like would you? Buy like if you're just sitting there going, I really oh yeast nine Starfield equivalent um, is going into Game Pass or is it? Well, I could buy it. What would you do as like a day one purchaser? Are you gonna subscribe? Like, would you? Yeah, I mean it depends on the game. So for a game like ease, I mean, if you really want to play it, that's the point. If yeah. you really want yeah, to yeah, play but, it, yeah. If I really oh if, like if, if it's either or like either yes, if you really want to play the game, are you gonna subscribe to play the game? Or are you gonna just buy the game? If you really want to play it, uh, most of the time I'm just probably just gonna subscribe. You're right? gonna subscribe. If I, cho- if I had a choice, but that's what I'm saying. It depends on game. So for, for me, well, I'm yeah, a huge, I'm a huge Final Fantasy. Uh, so Final Fantasy, then no, not you. So Final if, Fantasy Seven. If, if Final Fantasy set or Final Fantasy Sixteen, and they say, hey, you can get this fifteen dollars, right, or you can get the seventy dollar, bro. I'm buying the. Hundred dollar uh, physical deluxe edition. <laughs> yeah, you know what you I really mean? want to play. I'm, it. Buying, I'm buying because I'm because I'm super into that. Like I'm super. Like I bought two two copies of Final Fantasy VII remake. I bought the digital deluxe and, and the, the physical, physical deluxe. Mm-hmm. Right, both yeah. both of them were eighty dollars. Right, and that's and the point. To, all I got, all I got, all I had to do was pay uh, just so pay who? sixty dollars. But for like, but that's what I'm saying. But I only do that for like. There's only a handful of games. That will make me do that, but for the rest of the games, I'm subscribing. Yeah, why? Like that's because the thing. Like because like, it's a lot. Like I said, it's, it's like I don't have to. Like if I don't, have, if I can save money on playing the game, I, I would. You know what I mean? I would do it. But like, it, but like I said, it depends on on the game. Like for for a game like Eve, since that's already extremely niche. Like, I would want to support the developer, so I probably just I, yeah. I would have bought his physical copy. Anyway. Well, that's the, well. The thing is, is the point is, is that if you really want the game, like Starfield shows and it's incredible, and you like hyped up to play this game, are you gonna say, well, here's a, I, I, and I'm, oh, I can't wait to play and do this, and I'm gonna spend twenty five hours in the game and stuff like that? Are you most likely to subscribe or just buy the game outright? And, you know, Froggy says, if you already have Game Pass, why buy the game? I'm not talking about the people that already subscribed to Game Pass. I'm talking about the yeah, they want to grow yeah, Game Pass, game, dude. Really they want to grow that. Game Pass. Really I'm talking about yeah. new people because, they remember, they got their yeah. 18 million. If they want, they're buying Bethesda to grow Game Pass. If they want to grow it, well, if you're given the option to buy a game that people want to play or subscribe... The people that want to play the game are going to buy the game. The people that are uncertain about it are going to subscribe. So you're not really driving the day one buyers into your subscription. That's who you want to grow. You don't want the the, the lazy lake people just to sit there and going, I got Game Pass. Here's a new game. Click on the game. Yeah. You know, that's not the people they want. They want the person that says, Starfield looks awesome. Where is it? Xbox Game Pass. Just like they marketed Gears 5. Gears 5 was in Game Pass. In Game Pass. In Game Pass. So basically, like, you subscribe to play Gears 5. But people that I know love Gears bought it. Because they don't, they I don't, bought it. I bought it. You know, I didn't subscribe to Game Pass to play Master Chief Collection. I bought it. I was like, I'm buying this. I bought that too. Yep. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the thing is, is by putting great, amazing, by putting games, Microsoft has this challenge to convert those people into Game Pass subscribers. That's the thing. Like they, they want Game Pass to grow because they paid seven point five billion to put these games day one in Game Pass. Now. The thing that I'm thinking maybe they'll do, like what that CFO said, maybe first thing Game Pass, maybe they give Game Pass Ultimate people get it about a week or two earlier than the release. They did that with Gears Ultimate. Didn't they do it when they made it a, a few days earlier as Ultimate Edition? Or you could buy the Ultimate Edition? So like maybe they take Bethesda games and give them like a week or two early exclusivity in Game Pass and not able to purchase it yet. Now that's the way that I could see them driving Game Pass. What do you think about that? Like a week or two exclusivity before it's um, released to purchase. Now, would you do, Chris? Would you wait to buy it? Or would you subscribe and play it and then buy it? Probably do both, right? That's what I would do. Yeah, I would do both. Yeah, 
I was I was subscribed to to play it early and shit like that, but I probably still keep the physical like. I just you wait. Know, uh, you just wait. <laughs> yeah, just like to me, it, like like I said, it depends on like the game, like. Like it, it just game, Chris, like just make game, it a game like, that you can't wait to play. That's the thing. Yeah. Make it your best game. Yeah. Well, I already, I already told you. You already that. told me. Yeah. Yeah, I already told you. So, like, yeah, for like the best games, like, like or the game that I really want to play, God of War, Horizon, or Breath of the Wild Two, shit like that. It's like, yeah, I'm buying those games. Like, you know. But you're gonna up. probably like, subscribe I, to play them early, though. Oh yeah, if if, if I had right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. It's like if if it's I officially would. out, like if this is like officially out and you can only play through the subscription. Yep. Uh, for three weeks I'm earlier, so shit like that. Like Link's not doing it. You know why? Because especially if, if it's like a game that heavily involves story, I don't want to get spoiled. That that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what? It's funny. That's mm-hmm. why I bought Gears Four Ultimate. And I paid that extra hundred. I paid a hundred dollars for Gears Four because I didn't want somebody to spoil the story the three days before that I got to play it on Tuesday. I could play it on Friday, and I was like, I don't. I want to play it on Friday because I don't want somebody to spoil the story for me on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I By didn't Tuesday. even finish Gears Five, so I don't. Know no, I mean Gears Four. The only yeah, Gears Four. I bought the hundred dollar <laughs> Ultimate 4? Edition. Yeah, I don't know. The four and five games were not. I mean, nah, they weren't the know. best. They, they weren't, weren't the best. They were. The story they were, was they was, Yeah, I didn't but, like the new characters. But you got to think. I'm just thinking of different ways that they could do to kind of manipulate or move people to the Game Pass subscriptions. The other way is possibly making the game more more of a service type game, a game that's kind of refreshing content, whereas. Maybe a, a subscription would benefit that, and you could give little perks or something like that. But the thing is, is that I think the first and better is the way they're gonna go. I think they're gonna give it like yeah. Starfield Ultimate Edition, uh, play it four days early exclusively in Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Then it'll be available for maybe yeah. all of Xbox and maybe PlayStation Five. Uh. And then basically they got their like week or two exclusive and not like a month or two because I think that would hurt – that could hurt the game. But I think by giving it like a week or five days earlier in Game Pass Ultimate and if it's a game people really want to play, hell, I would subscribe just to play the game yeah. earlier. And also have like exclusive DLCs. Yeah, like exclusive right, DLC that, and perks. That don't that, come to PlayStation or something like, like something like a Destiny yeah. type of situation. Remember Destiny yeah. that they, they had – they had exclusive content on PlayStation that never made it to the Xbox, the first game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shit like well, that. first. Like or, 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 or like, like the... Stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, or time DLC or something like that. Exactly. Right. So like or that's then why it for like a year later. Yeah. Yeah, and now let me just like to reiterate that stuff. Let me read his <laughs> quote where he says that, and it'll get you guys out of here. But he's like, it's not about the point of being exclusive, but he says where it's gonna be now. Hear this. Think in those different scenarios. A first or better or best approach on all platforms. First, better, or best. So, like, now that kind of makes sense if I think about those different scenarios. Like, having the game come out a four to five days early in Game Pass. Maybe having content come out first uh, in Game Pass Ultimate. Like, giving those ultimate perks to people. Never said only. Never said only. Never said only. Only. That's the thing. On our platforms. And exactly. So, like, he's not talking about with taking it away, and they wouldn't take it away. That Starfield would be on everything. It will be on PlayStation. It will be on yeah, PC. Yeah, I think that's coming to everything. I but to everything. If, you have, if you subscribe, you'll get to play Starfield a week early. Or you'll play it, like, a few days early if you get the Ultimate. Like, you'll get the Ultimate Editions, which would be – and yeah. maybe what they'll do is they'll say – the ultimate edition of Starfield, which gives you like some extra DLC, but it also gives you four days early access, and you could pay pay for it for one hundred and twenty dollars, or you automatically no, get it like in they, Game Pass they, Ultimate. They get the ultimate edition in Game Pass, yep. right? And then and then PlayStation has to pay pay seventy dollars for the standard version. They yes, get an ultimate edition. Yes, yeah. So those are the kind of things that I'm thinking. Like you know. I, and and I, I think those are more sensible approaches than then just coming out and going, you know, all your games belong to us because that's kind of not what there is. And if they do, then then that's fine. But then they also have the battle that they got to figure out how do we get people in Game Pass and not just outright buying the game. 
And one of the methods was to increase Xbox Live. They wanted people not to go that route. Yeah, and uh, Buck, Buck, Buddy Cactus says, Gears 5 was four days earlier with Ultimate Edition. Yeah, it was four days earlier. So I think they could do that with some of those big Bethesda games. They could still be multi-plat, but they will give Xbox Ultimate. Yeah, and if they do that, you guys, you heard it here first. <laughs> you heard it with the grinders in the grind house. But are there any other questions or topics or anything you guys want to bring up? I think that was about it. Those are the only, those are the big things to talk about. I really would just like to see what the games look like before we start hyping them up. Rather than the ink and the deal, so yeah. But this is what everybody's talking about. So it's a talk show. Apparently, they're supposed to have some type of special, but there's the you know showing or something like that. Eddie Three, yes. Some games, but we'll see. You will see. We'll see. Yeah, they said that Bethesda was uh, gonna do their own. Like they were gonna it's have it's like a pretty show. interesting uh, transition. Uh, you know, a, a transitional period in gaming right now. It's interesting to see where all this is gonna end up and how all this is gonna play out. Yeah, a couple of years. I agree. So and, I'm, I'm very uh, curious. Yeah, you know what's interesting too is I see some people going like, Sony got to buy people, they got to buy stuff, and the thing is, is like, I, I, this is not a, like Sony is not in the business of of like they'll buy people to naturally to grow their studios, but the thing is, is like, look look at like if you look at what they did with Insomniac at the, and they purchased them in 2019 and what Insomniac has output so far. And then you look at Microsoft buying games in 2018 and their small studios, small games, and look at what their output has been. Like, you see that there's some there's something going on, like the management of the games or what the expectations are, because there's something there's some weird stuff going on. Like Sony's getting this output from Insomniac like crazy. And like, you know, I don't know what the hell they're doing with State of K three and what Hell Hellblade Two. It's <laughs> I, I like I have no yeah, clue, and and you know, Fable that we waited all with three years of rumors about it, and then just to show a title screen, and it goes into hiding, like you know, two years to build the studio, and the guy leaves, and then they like show Perfect Dark and like no gameplay, you know, and then you wait five years for Halo, and then you see it looking like horrible, and it's like you know, Craig in the chest hair, and like it's just really strange what's going on over there with their studios, and I don't know, they just got two thousand people with Bethesda. Booty's gonna be clapping. I don't. Can Booty run all those studios, <laughs> dude? Can Booty probably? That is gonna be a sweaty ass Booty going around there, yeah. man. <laughs> dripping Booty. I don't know. Can he run them? He ran. He ran Mojang and stuff like that. So like, yeah. you know, you know, it's it just the thing. <laughs> Glenza says, "Holy shit!" He says, "Sony develops, Microsoft devours." Yeah, you yeah. ask that to the Beam devs and to Mixer. You know? Yeah, they devour it and they shit it all out. Yep. And flush them down the toilet. And and you're gonna hear another first here, guys. <laughs> Grinders. Um, I said first when uh when Xbox was making out uh, Frog remembers this, but like when Xbox was was doing the 4K enhancements to Master Chief Collection after leaving it abandoned for for like two years, and everybody's like, they're doing it for the X. They're enhancing it for the X. I'm like, no, they're not. They're doing this to put this game on PC. I've got that was the early days of Planet Xbox. I got reamed out like, no way they'll put Master <laughs> Chief Collection on, on PC. What are you talking about? That's the only game that's not on PC. No way. They're just doing it for the Xbox One X. I'm like, no, they're gonna put it in PC. That's wh- why would they just take a game that's dying after two years? They didn't support it at all to try to fix it, and all of a sudden now with the One X, that and everything's going on PC. They're putting Master Chief on PC. Oh, no way they're going to do that. Yes, they did. So you're going to hear another one, guys. Expect in the next year or two a consolidation from these studios. Maybe a couple of them combine. Microsoft has some layoffs. Trust me. This is a lot of layers and overhead in a very challenging time right now. And the carpet's not matching the drapes. The output is not matching the purchases. Because now you got 23 studios and Bleeding Edge, which the support has dropped, which is a shame. Not to say that the game was good, but the fact is that it's not a proof that a passion project, Microsoft gave it no passion. The and fact that they out. dropped support of that game. That's what happens when you own somebody. Maybe Ninja Theory wanted to do more with the game and it feels like we own you. No. Hellblade 2. That's what happens when you own somebody. You could tell them what to prioritize. You're not going to tell them what to make, but you could guide them into what you you want. 
That's what happens when you own somebody. So think about that. Phil didn't spend $7.5 billion just to give you Bethesda games. He spent $7.5 billion to control Bethesda, to determine how their games will be released, maybe how their games would be formatted. But it's more of the con- owning them to dictate that kind of stuff. You don't dictate that stuff. Like Sony is not telling uh, Bethesda, Deathloop, I want it here in PlayStation Plus. I want it in PlayStation Now two months later. No. That's not how it happens when you buy the exclusivity to Deathloop. Deathloop comes out for a year. Contract, thank you very much. Goodbye. You don't control Deathloop. They just announced Doom PSVR. Yeah. (laughs) They just announced Doom PSVR. (laughs) You know? And then Buddy Cactus says, Jez, I'm going to say it. I think Microsoft's going to lay off half of Ninja Theory. <laughs> I, there will, And I don't wish layoffs on anybody. I'm just saying that that's why I'm saying a consolidation. They have got a lot of overhead. It's they not have, even layoffs. It's just people are just leaving. No, people They're are just quitting. leaving. You're right. They might just leave themselves yeah. and go to better pastures. They're just quitting. Yeah, it's they might just quit. <laughs> They're just quitting. Bro. They're just quitting. It'll natu- it's called natural progression. They're like, goodbye. You know? But the thing is, is that if these studios don't yield the output that Satya is expecting and, and the growth of Game Pass that Satya has been promised, probably by Phil, there's going to be a pivot. Just like they pivoted from Microsoft or Windows 10 to Steam games because that broke the whole Xbox ecosystem in half. People go, Xbox is PC. No, it was when Windows 10 Store existed and it was all under one ecosystem. Them putting games on Steam is basically them putting games on PlayStation. Like it, it's, it's a It's a... They're paying a royalty for those games. And the fact that those games are finding success on Steam shows that nobody gives a shit about Game Pass and nobody gives a shit about the Xbox Windows 10 store. They want to be done with anything Xbox. They just want it on their Steam, and that's where the game will go. And believe me, the success of Steam is fine for Microsoft, but the thing is is that that's not, their, that's not what they want. That, that wasn't the plan. The plan was Windows 10 store, one ecosystem, one UWAP or whatever the hell platform to put their game on. They had a pivot because nobody dealt with the Windows 10 store. Sea of Thieves stayed in the Windows 10 store for over three years. It didn't make any top 10 of bullshit. But then when it came to Steam, it sits there in the top 10. People weigh that shit out. That's how crazy they hate that Windows 10 store. Exactly, and then Microsoft see this, so of course, so it's like it would make sense for the same way for PlayStation. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like the, I'm telling like, you, like listen. the thing is, and and also too, you got to think, as the install base grows, it's about two to one, whatever rumored of sales or whatever like that. But the install base of PlayStation is growing at a rate that's faster than the Xbox rate. Again, it has been. By the time these games come out. Elder Scrolls and stuff. They're going to be so far behind. Can you deny an install base of like 60 million, 70 million PlayStations sitting out there in four or five years? Or who knows? Like that, I don't even know what the install base would be, but it's going to be a pretty big PlayStation install base. You're going to deny all those people games just for what? If you want to reach 2 billion gamers, that's, that's anonymous. That's, that's, you put your games everywhere. If you're reaching two billion, you don't say, "Well, I want to reach two billion gamers," but you know what? Those sixty million, not you. That's counterproductive to what they want. Satya don't give a shit about exclusivity. He calls them. He calls the Xbox the Nintendo because he don't know shit. He's like your mom from the eighties. Just Phil Spencer, because Phil Spencer said it's it's, it's uh, counter to what gaming is about. Yeah, he said it right here. He says it right in the, the mm-hmm. first article he showed. So, like, the thing is, is that they it, it they really need to focus in on quality and he said that they suffered in quality in a few years ago a couple years ago and they really need to sort out the output of these studios and who knows who knows like mixer we were sitting here in october 2019 going dude they're putting so much money into mixer right now it's incredible they're buying everybody they got ninja for all this money they, oh my god they just bought shroud oh my god dude they just brought this guy they brought this girl yo they're buying all the top twitch people it's crazy go to mixer six months later it's a cemetery it's crazy so right now, we might be in the ninja phase. Look at them buying all these studios. Look at all this stuff. 
And what, two years from now, when these games are delayed, these games don't sell or don't drive and don't gain interest that people want because the Microsoft management doesn't know how to make a goddamn game. They thought Craig was decent. And then, what? Sate goes, Phil, wrap it up. Start, start, start consolidating. Like the, I gave you the, the, the keys to the, to the gold. What's going on? Game Pass subscribers. Holiday. xCloud. Remember the impact of xCloud, everybody? Well, xCloud <laughs> launched on every Android phone. They grew 3 million people. They went from 13 mm-hmm. million. They went. They went from 15 million to 18 million people. They whatever, launched. Whatever two, happened to uh, cloud gaming tech? The, the shit that was. Did, everything's shutting down, dude. Google's Man, gone. No, but, yeah, but, yeah. but remember, it's like if you're connected with the cloud, it was gonna add more destructibility. Oh yeah, what happened to that? It was gonna the boost cloud. the graphical intent. Remember <laughs> the cloud-powered so, gaming. Remember, and then remember, Sony said somebody at Sony said that yeah, that shit's not that shit that's. That shit is not gonna go down like that. And then people are like, "What? What does Sony know? They don't know nothing." In Microsoft, they know everything. Microsoft got servers everywhere. They got them in the bunkers. Yeah. They got them in the you know, the, the submarines. Now, now, what happened to cloud? What happened to the cloud gaming? As far as like boosting the visuals of yeah, the performance Run the, of the game. Twelve Xboxes or something like that in the cloud. That's yeah. what. Yeah. Yeah. Guess yeah, yeah, Guess yeah. what? Dev More used time. it. Zero Dev. Like yeah. nobody's freaking using it. And guess what? Yeah. Crackdown suffered because they wanted to demonstrate that trash ass tech. Crackdown multiplayer had three goddamn maps and a broken ass uh, matchmaking system that they fixed a month later. Joseph Staten, the guy who's saving Halo right now, was the one that was on that project. That was the last thing he tried to save. But what happened to that? What happened to the off? Remember the people were like, oh, we're gonna get that resolution. They still never got that resolution bump, even with uh, the power of the cloud. That's the thing, like. Microsoft has a history of this, and that's why I do this on the Grindhouse. I, I'm the worst thing because I follow. I used all their shit and rode that wave, and I've come to the realization that this is a, a vicious pattern that they do, and I need to see more proof from them now before I go jumping on that wave again. They have talked too much of a yeah. game. I've dealt. I've seen the same exact statements with Windows Phone and all the same. Though the devs are coming, we're paying devs. We're gonna bring you all these apps, and the platform shuts down before it even sees the light of day. Mixer was another mm-hmm. one. People made careers on Mixer, and they shut it down overnight. Facebook Gaming and oh, they 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 their Facebook Gaming has Microsoft said anything about Facebook Gaming besides that blog in July? Have they promoted Facebook gaming at all? Has Major Nelson do his shows on Facebook gaming? Oh, yeah. I forgot about No. No. Yeah, I no. Yeah. It was bullshit. Yeah. They, they, they shut, they, they mystery, they shut the they whole... Try to go with, they try to go after Facebook, and that shit ain't working out. <laughs> Dude, they said go to Facebook gaming. Do you see Microsoft like partnering? People are like, oh, they sold the tech to Facebook gaming. They're partnering with them. They're going to use them. No, dude. They skipped town. And they said, go to Facebook Gaming while they stole your, sh- your jewelry out of your friggin' uh, bedroom. They told you to look left and they ran right. That's exactly what happened. So I think the way Microsoft history... Has, Microsoft has so many failed products. Dude, like, but they like do the, this the, all the, the time. Mi- yeah. Yeah. I think we're in the ninja phase right now. Buying all this stuff, buying all... And that's why I even think, like, when you hear these interviews... And he's just like, the Xbox community knows that the Bethesda games are coming to Game Pass... I think he is doing the carrot trick to everybody. He's dropping carrots to keep the goodwill of the remaining people that are still believing in him. And this is just more of buying goodwill. And I think games like Perfect Dark, games being named like Fable, I think those are just carrots because I think he knows that if he if he dropped a new IP from them, people will be like, uh... But Fable has some clout. That will keep people, the, the legacy Xbox fans yeah, around. Yeah, I love, Perfect, I love Fable. Yeah, too. Perfect Doc, yeah. that'll keep them subscribed. Like, that'll keep them here because they know those franchises. But, like, I'm not going to have a guy yeah, just come up. It depends on how good those games come out. But the name, you know I mean? so, the name is the carrot, the Yeah, promise. the name is going to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name and is that's... That's why I think I'm like, I really don't even know when those games are even come out. Like, I can't wait to see gameplay because I really think that those are just placeholder names. I, I don't think that they that those games don't exist, but I think that those games are kind of like 
they just put those names out there just to kind of still get that good faith, that goodwill. Like yeah, I think there's a name is, drops. They're like name drops. Like, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I think they're name drops. Because why would you build a brand new studio and say you're gonna work on Perfect Doc? Where the hell did you dig that shit up from? That's just for the guy that made Tomb Raider, Daryl Gallagher. He would walk in there, I made Tomb Raider, I love Uncharted games. You're making perfect doc, bitch. What? A first person uh, a first person uh you know a parkour game. Whoa. Okay. You know? So like the thing is is that Microsoft has a management problem. And now they got more. And with great power comes great responsibility. So they got 23 studios. I don't want to hear the wait to E3 anymore. Microsoft should have so much fucking content right now that they should be dropping well, bangers no every E3. month. <laughs> right? They're pretty much, E3 is pretty much dead. So Well, it's gonna be well they're till, still holding people till, uh, out till June, dude. Yeah. It's they're still not announcing the anything thing. like now. People are like, well, where's your show? Sony announced a couple games coming up until June. Like, that's the thing. Right. Like, you, you you look at Sony and Nintendo. They got until games August. coming out until June, to August. Yeah, they got Nintendo. a lineup of the next yeah. few months. Microsoft, it's like, hope you like Medium. And uh, hello? <laughs> hello? Uh, uh, feels no, like we're hope done. You, no, hope you like Medium, Crickets, and then, oh, by the way, um, because she signed the papers for Bethesda, we own them. And that's it. <laughs> and we're going to do a show now, and, and Todd Howard's going to be like, yeah, Phil owns me now. You know, he had me running around getting his, yeah. his papers and his coffee for him now. Like, but uh, there's rumors of the show, right? That all of a sudden, Elder Ring gets rumored to be at this Microsoft <laughs> show. And then Eric Greenberg said, like, yeah, don't expect any type of announcement like this at any event that we're doing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so, exactly. Because you know what that event is? It probably is going to be their GDC announcement. Talking about their Microsoft stack. That's what it is. It's their GDC. That's GDC now. Like that's what that is. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. Because GDC is about. To yeah. Come. It's GDC not no. Right it's not no E three. It's GDC. It's end of March into April. That's GDC. I know because yeah. I used to go to PAX East and they were coming off yeah, of GDC. Damn. So it's going to be a GDC, GDC thing. Yeah. yeah. But like it, it, this, and and again, like people are, are salivating just for great games, and you know they just bought a five hundred dollar machine. They're not seeing it live up to the full potential, and they just want Microsoft to drop bangers. That's all they've wanted for the last year. And it's sad that there really are people that just want great games for the platform. Exclusive. Make them a goddamn exclusive. Slap Sony up their bitch-ass face and be like, here's a banger. Shut up, Sony. Here it is. Only yeah, on Xbox. You want to you take, take Final Fantasy away from us? Yeah, take, bitch. Uh, this game away from us? Let's well, go. Well, we're taking fucking Fallout away from you. Dude. We're taking yeah. Elder Starfield away. looks like, and, and just give yeah. them a great goddamn game. Like, and the thing is, is that this is what people have been waiting for. Even if you, people forget it, like, wait to E3, they forget how disappointing 2019, the only show in town E3 was for Xbox. It was a multi plat show. They showed wrestlers under the stage. Demonstrating Gears uh, Escape, not even gameplay. They never talked about the Gears campaign until the game released, or Ninja streamed it a, a day before the game release and spoiled so this, it. So this, Microsoft is so disconnected, man. So it's but horrible. Yeah, kinda, that was 2019. Yeah. Sony skipped E3. Yeah, I got, I got to head out. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, it is messed. But hey, Chris, tell people where they can find you, man. Um, you just follow me on Twitter at Chris Righteous. Um. Also, uh, yeah, I, I'm supposed to be coming out with some video content soon, so I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, or I may not. I probably probably won't. I always say I do, but then I don't. <laughs> I just get lazy to do them. <laughs> but uh, Planet Xbox, obviously Wednesdays. I'm the. Uh, You're gonna be talking about Bethesda guy. again. The, get ready. Uh, yeah, I'm get the, those I'm articles. The reasoning over there. I right? I'm, the, I'm the, the the common sense guy over there. All right. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> and Salty is gaming podcast this Thursday, which we didn't have one last week. Yeah, because uh, brother Salty was in the the hospital, but everything's okay. Glad he's okay. Yep. So yeah, we're gonna have a lot to talk about this Thursday. It's gonna be crazy. That'll be wild. Yeah, so we gotta be on, for that. Be, be on the lookout for that, man. That's right. So other than that, man, play play y'all games, man. Make sure y'all play y'all games. Play your Most games. Yes, yeah, sell frogs. Say goodbye to the Yo. grinders. Thank you again, Yo, man, everybody. I appreciate it. 
I appreciate uh, everybody stopping by. You can catch me here Monday uh, afternoons with Jez. Uh, I'll be back on more frequently now because uh, it seems like all my family went home. Uh, you can catch <laughs> me Monday, mo- Monday, Monday mornings, Wednesday mornings, and Friday mornings. Uh, and I play with uh, my wife and uh, a buddy of mine. We're called the WYFB crew. Um, watch your friends back. We, that's that's been our tag ever since you know the original OG PS three three sixty days. So we started up just we're mostly streaming. It's not really a podcast. We're just doing live streaming just for like an hour, hour and a half. Just playing a game that we love and, and you know live reactions and how we really are. So uh, go ahead and subscribe to WYFB crew channel. Uh, we did a video today, pretty entertaining. Uh, we still got to work some of the bugs and kinks out, but um, um, the, as far as podcasting, this is the place you'll catch me. As far as talking about games, if you just want to see me play, WYB Crew is the place to uh, to catch me out playing. Nice man, yes, definitely check that out, man. Definitely check that out. Hit guys, hit that like button. Link, say goodbye to the good people. You know, it was a good show. I came on late. I didn't say much, but. Um... Everybody had great opinions and stuff like that. And um, hopefully I'll be able to join again another time. Hey, no problem, man. Thank, But I want to thank everybody again for coming out. This is an awesome show. And, you know, it was a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things going down and a lot of change. And you never know. I would say never say never with anything. Exclusive, not exclusive. But, hey, they should be exclusive as we made a point. But, man, what craziness going on here. Phil Ness running wild in these streets. But I want to hit, thank you, everybody. Hit that like button on the way out. Hit the subscribe if you're new here. I want I got that addendum to the grindhouse. But I want to thank everybody again for an awesome show. Thank you for your time. And uh, again, we are out. Grindhouse is closed. See you later, Arnold. One more Arnold clip, though, before I go. I got to have the Arnold clip because I think this is so pertinent right now. Where is it? One more before I leave. I've got news for you. You are mine now. You belong to me. Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm. All right, man. That was a good one. Uh, we're wrapping up. Hold on. Get my outro. There it is. <laughs>